On a platform in the sky, there was a spirit that was sitting on a paper scroll. He spread his arms to the sides and said that at the onset of the parade of planets, a soul was born from a seven-colored stone. A young man began to emerge from the seven-colored stone, and the spirit said that it was wonderful, simply excellent. Everything is exactly as it is said in the divine writings. The emperor's transition to the present world with a new body. Let him destroy all evil spirits and show them a new path. The young man closed his eyes against the bright light and then said that he wanted to miss it. The spirit asked in surprise, what did he say? The young man lazily called him a download mob and told him to keep quiet. First, he needs to look around the new game. What kind of terrible game is this? No login screen directly enters the player into VR. The spirit exclaimed in surprise game. Some time ago, the young man sat at the computer and watched his recorded gameplay. In the video, he told his viewers that his name is Lion Jew. He welcomes them to the Cyber Kings broadcast. Today, they will take the finals. The young man watched the video and thought that he had been filming videos for a year, but still could not get used to his voice. His name is U Yangsen, and he loves games very much. He went to university to study the most relaxed profession, nursing for the elderly. In his free time, of which he has plenty, he spends time playing online games and making compilations. He doesn't have many fans, he has to survive somehow. They write in private messages only to beg for new videos. Indeed, more than a month has passed since the last video, it's time for him to make something new. But now there is not a single interesting game, he has completed almost all the old games. New games need early access or they are delayed by publishers as usual. No one can understand his pain. Suddenly he received a message and he thought, has he received a message from an unknown recipient? Do you need a tester for a new game? Are there any games he hasn't heard of yet? He read the message and after that a light illuminated him. Currently, U Yangsen was sitting on the heavenly platform and said that he understood everything. It seemed that he had moved. The spirit flew up to him and said that this was his destiny. Now he has an ordinary weak body, but under his strict guidance, hard training and constant killing of monsters, he will be able to overcome his limits and rise to the pinnacle of cultivation. After all, he is a reincarnated emperor. Uyengsen was not at all surprised by his words and thought, Emperor. What kind of cliché? The spirit said that he was his servant, his name is the Dawn Star, he served the emperor for 1,000 years, and now he is in the form of a spirit. He is inside the Empyrean Anthology scroll, and now he gives this scroll to him. U Yangsen was slightly surprised and took the scroll and saw his characteristics there. Health 120 out of 120, Endurance 60, Strength 54, Agility 68, Intelligence 85, Nature 96. Combat Readiness Ordinary Person Spiritual Power 5, Kai Energy 9, Magic and Martial Techniques are not open. The spirit looked into the scroll and said that it was strange. The anthology appeared before him in a completely different form. He's definitely reborn. U Yangsen asked, so this scroll is a kind of system in this world? The Pradhan star smiled and said that, as fate had destined for him, he should not be afraid, even though he was confused now. U Yangsen looked at him and asked, in what sense? What should he not be afraid of? Even if he had not moved here, the game would still have stolen him around the clock. So what's the difference? The Perdon Star was surprised at his courage and thought that it was a pity that he knew nothing at all. He would have to train for several hundred years to overcome the limit of an ordinary person, but he would teach him everything. U Yangsen looked at the scroll again and thought that the system was so easy to learn. Although this is a different world, if he accepts this as an ordinary game, he is quite capable of this. As the Dawn Star said, this scroll will change as he grows and will be under his control. But if the system is like in a regular game, then he thinks he can handle it. The Perdon Star loudly called out to the Reborn and asked, Does he even understand the fate of how many people are now on his shoulders? The entire race of immortals. U Yangsen looked at him and thought that compared to ordinary download mobs, this one is too noisy. He talks and won't shut up. The Perdon Star said that it all started 1,000 years ago during the Great War between the Immortals and the Demons. U Yangsen ordered him to be silent, and the Perdon Star immediately fell silent and began to moo. U Yangsen laughed and then hugged his spirit and said that it was a joke. He cancelled his order, and the Dawn Star took a deep breath. U Yangsen said that he said that he was inside the scroll, so he wanted to experience it. They will be patient with the backstory for now, he will tell him his time permits. And also, don't let him call him reborn, his name is U Yangsen. 
Pradhan Star asked, then they will move on to training. The training path is long, let him let his servant help. Wu Yangsen replied that he did not need it. He has played more games than he ever dreamed of, so he will be able to do everything blind. He already knows what game he has entered into. The Pradhan Star was very surprised and three months have passed since that moment. Werewolves arrived in the abandoned Heavenly Palace. They looked around and one of them told his king that even though the emperor had lived in this abandoned palace for 1,000 years, they searched every inch here, but found nothing. The werewolf king said that they were so petty, he expected a big profit. 1,000 years ago, in the great war between immortals and demons, demons teamed up with werewolves and attacked the immortals. In that war, people had to enter into this unequal battle. The immortals were defeated and the emperor fell. The celestial beings were surrounded and practically exterminated. Since then, in the second spiritual world, the immortals have practically died out and could not be reborn. Behind the king, the werewolves stood his subjects and drove the immortal spirits into one heap. The king turned around and asked, is this the remaining perfume? His subordinate replied that they had practically exhausted their spiritual power and they also had no kai. They won't even be able to be fed to werewolves. The current immortals can only exist in the form of spirits, simply disembodied ghosts. One of the spirits said that they didn't have long left. When the emperor was reborn, he would revive the people of immortals. Suddenly the werewolf king hit her with all his might and her spirit began to dissolve. He smiled and called her a small fry and asked how she could do that. Let them move and don't linger. Wu Yangsen suddenly appeared. He caught the spirit and said that in this world, immortals do not look very good. Everyone present immediately turned to him and asked, Who is he? Wu Yangsen released the spirit and said that the heavenly palace had become so dilapidated and the scroll did not have the exact address. If it weren't for the information from these werewolves, he would have been looking for this place for a long time. The spirit wanted to ask who he was, but a Pradhan star appeared near them and one of the spirits said that it was the Pradhan star. It turns out the omen has come true. Is this the reincarnated emperor? The Pradhan star replied displeasedly that this was so, this was their guy. He has already surpassed the boundaries of an ordinary person. Let them line up and greet their emperor. One of the spirits said that the emperor had the highest rank. Why does he talk about him so disrespectfully? Another spirit asked, did he call the reincarnated emperor their boyfriend? Wu Yangsen looked at the pre-dawn star and asked, why is he so angry today? He replied that he chose the most terrible road, he was so sick that he felt sick. The werewolf king pointed his finger at them and told them to speak less. So he's the reincarnated emperor. Then he will again send him to another world. Wu Yangsen used his power to look at the characteristics of the werewolf and saw that it was a leopard, he was the leader of the werewolves. Health 378 and 378, Endurance 150, Strength 259, Agility 80, Intelligence 19, Nature 23. Combat Readiness, Hardened. Spiritual Power 160, Energy 479. Magic Not Studied, Combat Technique, Fist of 1000 Predators. Wu Yangsen thought that judging by his level, he was a low-grade boss. Second class boss among werewolves. Apparently, he is from a gang of mountain bandits, since he has no special abilities. He's so weak. He sighed and thought, are there such weaklings and castles in the sky now? The werewolves immediately surrounded him, and their leader said that he was surrounded. Now let him pay for his impudent speeches. But at the same moment, an unknown force pressed on him with enormous force and blood poured out from everywhere. Wu Yangsen hit him so hard that there was no flesh and bones left of him. Everyone present was very frightened and Wu Yangsen asked who even came up with the idea that at the beginning of the battle you need to show off like that. They are such weak mobs, he doesn't even want to think about them. He also decided to chat with him. Wu Yangsen turned around and called them small fry with a smile and asked how they could do that. The werewolves were very scared and said that they needed to run away quickly, but Wu Yangsen used his strength and threw a net at them. All the werewolves ended up in a round cage, and the spirits said that he had such great spiritual power and incomparable pure energy. Definitely the emperor returned to save their family. Wu Yangsen began to shake the cage with the werewolves and said that they should give him the weapons. The spirits asked what he was doing. The Pradhan star looked away and said that it had started again. Wu Yangsen finished taking the werewolves' things and said that that seemed to be all. One of the werewolves asked for mercy. But Wu Yangsen ignored him and took out a huge cauldron from his pouch and told them to burn. 
He put the werewolves inside the cauldron and said that he didn't care that they were a low-grade mob. He would get some healing potions from them. He will not lose a single copper coin. One of the spirits asked, Did he send living werewolves into the fire to create healing potions? The Perdon Star replied that they will get used to it. These are just flowers. U Yangsen passed by the spirits, and they bowed to him, congratulating him on his return. U Yangsen waved his hand and told them to stop. They were probably tired. He threw the bag to them and said that they should take out everything inside. The spirit caught the bag and said that it was a Kankui bag. The spirit standing nearby said that although the Tsankui bag looks small, you can put a lot of valuable things inside. He took out another bag from the bag and asked, Is this another bag of Chankui? The spirits took out a few more bags from the bag and exclaimed, Are there so many other bags in the bag? Why so many? A whole mountain of bags had already lined up, and the spirit exclaimed, How many of them are there? U Yangsen told them not to litter. He packed everything there in order. Weapons, equipment, artifacts, magical artifacts, seals, potions, spiritual herbs, alcohol. The spirit exclaimed so many things. The Perdon star displeasedly confirmed his words and said that he was picking up everything. That's all he did besides training. U Yangsen walked up to him with a smile and said that these artifacts were lying around the world because of the war. He brought them all together just to get them back. Does he understand? So or not. The Perdon star became very angry and said that the revival of the immortal people is the path of good, not robbery. U Yangsen exclaimed, so he is now a robber. He's the emperor, isn't he? The things of immortals belong to him. If he returned them to himself, then how can he be considered a robber? The spirits began to get nervous and said that their emperor was angry. The Perdon star is also a little out of sorts. How can he speak to the emperor so disrespectfully? The spirit that U Yangsen saved flew up to him and asked what they should do with all the artifacts from the Kankui bags. U Yangsen said that they should take them to the royal storehouse. He examined the palace and asked, Was the imperial palace abandoned and destroyed? But according to rumors, not everything is as terrible as it really is. The spirits were upset, and one of them said that 1,000 years ago their palace was attacked. It was attacked countless times. U Yangsen told them to stop whining. Since he was here, they would start restoring. He opened a scroll with drawings of the palace and said that to restore the heavenly palace, piles from sacred wood and bricks from spiritual crystals would be needed. He has all that, but there is something missing. He turned his gaze to the spirits, and they became nervous at his mere glance. After that, U Yangsen ordered them to carry materials and said that they should start working now. The spirits had already begun to transfer materials and U Yangsen, hugging the pre-dawn star, said that he should make sure that everyone worked. The restoration of the Imperial Palace is the basis for the revival of the Immortals, so let him not shirk and keep an eye on everything. The pre-dawn star chuckled displeasedly and then joined the other spirits and said that if only they knew how he spent all these months. The spirit asked, their reincarnated emperor is a little crazy, right? Suddenly, U Yangsen appeared behind him and replied that just a little. The spirit was very frightened and U Yangsen, in a rage, told them to start working, stop talking. The spirits immediately increased the pace of work and submitted to his majesty. Time passed. The destroyed heavenly palace was almost completely restored and U Yangsen began distributing pills to the spirits. He said that he distributes pills, one to each, they restore true Kai. The spirits thanked the emperor and U Yangsen said that these pills were created from the body of the monsters he killed, so the effect would be incredibly strong. The spirits were horrified and U Yangsen said that there is no need for gratitude, let them eat, there will be enough for everyone. The spirits were upset and obeyed him. After that, the Perdon star approached U Yangsen and said that the main halls of the heavenly palace were about to be restored. He showed him a scroll of restoration progress and told him that the main halls were 98% restored. What should they do next? U Yangsen was happy about this and said that he would finally have his own base. The Perdon star approached him and asked when he would go to complete his main task. U Yangsen looked away and asked in confusion, did he learn a new word? What task is he talking about? This is the first time he has heard about it. The Perdon star unfolded the scroll and shouted that everything in the anthology was written on the first page. You need to destroy all monsters and demons. U Yangsen asked, is that all? There is something missing in this assignment. He raised his index finger up and said that there were not enough awards. Without rewards, he will not complete any tasks. This is the only incentive for a real player. The Dawn Star replied that he was simply insatiable. 
Wu Yangsen smiled and said that he understood him better than anyone. The Dawn Star got angry and said that he had not actually praised him. Wu Yangsen hugged him and told him to stop whining. With a power like his, what should he do next? He is sure that there is a lot of hidden data in the anthology. He needs to slowly study everything. Suddenly, the scroll showed that the restoration was complete and Wu Yangsen asked, Are they finished? The spirits were happy about this and said that they were so good. The Pradhan star said that there is one more step to completion. Wu Yangsen asked, What is it? The spirits gathered near Wu Yangsen and the Pradhan star said that let him give a name to the new palace. Other spirits bowed to the emperor and supported the words of the Pradhan star. Wu Yangsen asked, New name? In this case, let it be 1, 2, 3. The spirits froze in place in shock, and the Perdon star exclaimed in rage, What kind of idiotic name is this for a heavenly palace? Can't he use some of his brains and come up with something grander? Wu Yangsen said that he was tired of it and was too lazy to come up with a name. The Perdon star was upset and said that this place used to be the holy palace of Ladrostromium. Wu Yangsen replied that it used to be before. He likes what he came up with. He said that the palace would be called 123. The Perdon stars sighed heavily, and after that the palaces rose into the sky and Wu Yangsen said that let them prepare for takeoff, they rise. The scroll flew past them, and the spirits asked, has a new prediction appeared in the Empyrean Anthology? What strange writing. Wu Yangsen named the Perdon star Tai Bai and said that he was a professional in anthology predictions. What is written there? The Predon star replied that the heavens would be covered with darkness and everything that existed would come to an end. During the parade of planets, the world will turn back. The holy demons will merge into one, and the great emperor will return. Having concluded a management agreement, he will lead all the immortals. Information appeared on the scroll about who Wu Yangsen needed. It was written there that he needed 12 Yusu immortals, 4 immortal officials, 28 immortals, 10 great generals. The Perdon star said that as he sees it, important assistants of the emperor are indicated here, who are not yet there. Wu Yangsen looked at the list and said that he needed to look for them again. The Pradhan star said that the anthology had given him a task he needed to assign services. Wu Yangsen asked, what's so difficult? Let him line everyone up and let them choose their positions. The spirits replied that they, of course, could do so, but the affected souls were not capable of becoming the highest ranks under the emperor. Wu Yangsen asked, even so, and who then is suitable for these positions? Suddenly one of the spirits called out to his majesty and told him to look at the heavens. A precious stone appeared in the heavens, and the Perdon star said that it was a seven-colored stone. Are new souls coming here? Wu Yangsen asked lazily, can this stone be so high? Something new. The Perdon star said that things were bad. If the reincarnated one showed up now, he would be in danger. Wu Yangsen used the square ice sphere magic technique and took control of the crystal. After that, he took the scroll and went somewhere, saying that he had just repaired the palace. We must quickly create a protective barrier around the heavenly palace, and let them see that no one flies around. It wouldn't hurt to add stealth technology and a couple of devices for protection. The Perdon star exclaimed, where is he going? The native is still above them. The crystal began to crack and a girl appeared from there. She slowly opened her eyes and said that she felt so dizzy. She was getting ready to go home, looked at her phone, and then this. She finally woke up and felt that she could not move, and exclaimed, Where is she stuck? She saw a crystal in front of her and thought, What is this? Where did she end up? Where is her room? She saw the heavenly palace below her and exclaimed, What the hell? After that, the girl was carried to bed, and she thought that she had fainted twice today. She thought it was a dream, but she actually moved. Her name is Shen Sanya. She is 19 years old and a student. There were spirits next to the bed, and she thought, what are those three blue spirits doing? They are so cute, but she doesn't know how to talk to them, so she just pretends to be asleep. Wu Yangsen approached the spirits and asked how she was. Everything is fine. Shen Sanya recognized Wu Yangsen's voice, and the spirit told him that she was only shocked. Wu Yangsen said that they should bring her some food and drinks. The spirits obeyed his order, and Shen Sanya thought that she knew this voice and intonation. Why does he look so much like that guy? No, is that him? The other spirit told Wu Yangsen that she would also leave then. Wu Yangsen was a little surprised and asked, What is it? Shen Sanya jumped out of bed and called Wu Yangsen Wu's brother. Wu Yangsen remained silent, but the spirits were surprised and Shen Sanya asked, Lion Ju, is this him? 
one of the spirits began to push the other spirits towards the exit and said that it was time for them to go. Another spirit asked, but why? She said that they should not ask. Shen Sanya continued to look at U Yangsen, and he asked how she knew this name. She exclaimed that he was the coolest blogger Lianju. She has been following him since childhood. She loves his videos. Her ID is Ame. U Yangsen was very surprised and thought, what the hell? Does he really have fans? And such a beauty too. It's strange that she moved into this world. How is this possible? But why the hell has she subscribed to him for 10 years? After all, he played for at most a year. Shen Sanya continued to wait for his answer and wondered why he froze. Let him say something, she is so embarrassed. Some time passed, they sat down to talk and U Yangsen said that she was transported here because of him. That means he should apologize to her. Shen Sanya waved her hands and replied that everything was fine. He also didn't move here of his own free will, she doesn't blame him. As he said, this world is like a game. But if they can get through this, then will they return home? U Yangsen replied that logically everything should be like this, but he could not guarantee anything. There are many more stages in the scroll that he still hasn't discovered. But he knows one thing for sure, the player can be reborn again, so she will be safe. Shen Sanya asked, it turns out that he was not online for a whole month because he moved to this world? U Yangsen asked, just a month. Is she confident in her calculations? She confirmed his words and said that she checks his page every day. She certainly wouldn't mix anything up. U Yangsen asked, what was the date before she moved here? She replied that it was the 10th Friday. She was still getting ready to go home. U Yangsen said that they moved on the same day, but he stayed here for more than 100 days. In their world, that means not even a day has passed. Shen Sanya asked, maybe in their world one day is equal to a whole year here. She laughed and said that she felt so calm now. No matter how long they are in this world, she will still make it home in time for dinner. She was delighted and said that he was the best gamer in the whole world. With him, any game would be the easiest. U Yangsen said that he would give her one task. She was a little surprised and asked which one. U Yangsen scratched his neck awkwardly and said that she shouldn't call him by his nickname. He came up with it at random. Shen Sanya said that when she introduced herself, she only gave her ID. How did he know her real name? He replied that her character window showed her name. He thought that she also had a system and saw everything. By the way, maybe she needs to learn the ability of the celestial eye. Shen Sanya asked, system? Ability? U Yangsen asked, so she can't see the game system. Or something similar. She replied that when she first transferred, she tried to check the system, but there was nothing. U Yangsen looked at her stats again and saw that her health was 145, stamina 25, strength 18, agility 32. She was an ordinary person, spiritual strength 2, energy 9. Magical and martial techniques are not open. U Yangsen frowned and thought that she had been transported here from another world. But for now, she is a simple person and she needs to overcome boundaries to become immortal. But she doesn't have a system, she won't be able to raise her level as quickly as he does. Besides, the scroll states that she is only a character. He raised his hand to his face and thought, So this is it. Is this one of the details of the game? Stupid cultivation simulators. She smiled awkwardly and said that she moved so stupidly she was so ashamed. He said that she needed to start training and studying, but she didn't even know where to start. U Yangsen said that she should not worry, because he will be her teacher. After that, time passed, U Yangsen stood at the wall and waited for Shen Sanya. He asked, is she ready? Shen Sanya came out of the room wearing a new outfit and confirmed his words. She became embarrassed and said that, to be honest, this was the first time she had been dressed like this. Sister Fringe and other perfumes helped her with her hair. How is he? U Yangsen glanced at the spirits who whispered to him that let her praise her. They tried. U Yangsen understood them. He showed his thumb and said that she was a beauty. Shen Sanya did not expect such words and the spirits were disappointed in U Yangsen. Shen Sanya hesitantly thanked U Yangsen and thought, what kind of praise is this? He probably never talked to women. She doesn't understand him at all. They went forward and U Yangsen said that those clothes in the dressing room were the spiritual clothes of the immortal fairies. It fits any size, she can take whatever she wants. Shen Sanya asked, is this true? So convenient. How nice it is to live in a fairy palace. It's so luxurious here. U Yangsen smiled and said that it was natural. Fringe said that she probably doesn't know, but their palace was destroyed and abandoned for many years. But now the palace has been restored thanks to the emperor. Shin Sanya asked, this means how? 
She thought that while communicating with Sister Fringe, she realized that they were immortals from this palace. Their palace was attacked and most survived only thanks to their spiritual body, they lost all their cultivation and lived in this form all this time. Over the years, they lost almost all their memories, even their names were forgotten. Their new names were given to them by Brother Wu. But the names he gave them sound like he gave them based on their appearance. One spirit is called Biscuit, the other Chestnut. Two spirits with tufts on the sides are called Blueberry and Meatball. The spirit with the long hair is called Fringe, the other is called Ponytail, and the biggest one is called Pumpkin. There is also a tambourine, a cornfield, a roll, a coin, and a hill. Shen Sanya told Wu Yangsen that he had collected so many women's things. Wu Yangsen replied that even though he doesn't wear them, he must have them. She asked if he could try on something. It will definitely suit him. Wu Yangsen ignored her and walked up to the Perdon star, saying that she had not met him yet. This is the Perdon star he spoke about earlier, he calls it Tai Bai. This is an immortal who is in the anthology of the Empyrean, or more simply put, in the system. He uses his voice to control the system, and he can also influence it. The Perdon star greeted the reborn and Shen Sanya thought that he so easily changed the topic of conversation. Wu Yangsen told her that she could dress him up in women's clothing. When he returns to his true body, he probably won't be able to wear it, but he's sure it will suit him. The Perdon star indignantly said that he would forgive him, but he could not agree with him. The spirits asked, the Perdon star in women's clothes? They want to see it. Perdon star became angry and thought that he originally thought that he, being in the anthology, could help the reincarnated to cultivate and become immortal, just like he had helped the previous emperors of heaven. But he could not even imagine that he would meet such an idiot. He's a problem maker, a shameless guy, he never rests, and he's also a first class idiot. He looked at Shen Sanya and thought that a new reincarnation had come to them. So it turns out she knows him. Shen Sanya noticed him looking at him and walked up to him to introduce herself. He asked, according to the system, he is the emperor's guide? The Perdon star was surprised and thought, guide, is that what she called him? Shen Sanya thought about it and said that this word does not suit this world. Best Mr. Don Star. The Perdon star immediately became delighted with such beautiful words and Wu Yangsen beckoned Shen Sanya over with his hand, saying that it was time for her to start her cultivation. He will take her to the initial training area at the beginner's village. Shen Sanya said that she was coming, and the Perdon star told them to wait. He flew up to Wu Yangsen and asked, Does he want to take Miss Sanya to the so-called newcomer village? How can he let a fragile girl go to such a place? Wouldn't it be better to find a quiet and peaceful place to practice? Wu Yangsen asked with a smile, so now he calls her Miss Sanya. They'll discuss it later, he has business for him. The anthology says that 54 assistants to the emperor are needed, but now only she has arrived. Let him look for any clues, they need to get this over with quickly. The Perdon star thought, had he really decided to take care of this? Finally, he showed at least a little responsibility, he has the makings of a true emperor. He replied that he would take care of everything. They have restored the heavenly palace, and this will sooner or later attract demons and monsters. They need to quickly restore the strength of the immortals. Wu Yangsen waved his hand and told him not to think about these demons, they would not defeat him. The only thing that infuriates him is that there are more than 50 assistants missing. If he doesn't gather everyone, he will definitely die. The Perdon star thought that this idiot could not be saved. After that, Wu Yangsen used the true Kai formation and summoned flying blades. She and Shen Sanya stood on blades, and she asked with delight, when will she be able to fly? Wu Yangsen replied that there are hundreds of techniques for flying, but first she needs to build a base. The flying blade technique is stable. Short swords are needed for protection, a large blade for flight. If she is afraid, she can grab onto one of the blades. Shen Sanya replied that she understood and Wu Yangsen said that they should fly then. Shen Sanya waved goodbye to the spirits and they flew out of the heavenly palace. Wu Yangsen showed Shen Sanya the characteristics and told her to take a look. These are her characteristics. He can share with her what he sees himself, so she will figure it out faster. As soon as they reach the newcomer's village, he will help her with cultivation and at the same time explain what these characteristics are needed for. Later, he will also recommend a couple of quick cultivation methods for beginners. Shen Sanya was delighted and said that he is such a professional, the god of guides. She looked through all his game guides, but she couldn't even imagine that he would teach her personally. These are private lessons from a great master. Wu Yangsen asked what kind of great master he was to her. 
Shen Sanya was a little upset and thought, he doesn't even allow himself to be praised. Wu Yangsen said that they would arrive soon. She asked, what kind of newcomer village is this? He replied that he gave the place such a nickname. This place is actually called the Abyss of the Dead. Shen Sanya thought, such a creepy name. He smiled and said that this is a simple place, great for practice. She looked at his face and thought, a simple place. She is sure that this is not such a seedy place, because he said so. He's not deceiving her, is he? After that, they arrived at a huge wasteland, and she asked, Have they arrived? It's so windy and cold here. She thought that the village of newcomers was a foothill village, that their NPCs were given small tasks to complete which you just had to run from house to house. Wu Yangsen smiled and told her to take her time. The locals would soon greet them. Immediately after his words, the dead began to crawl out of a crack in the ground and Shen Sanya, hearing the noise, turned in their direction. The mutilated corpses ran towards them and Wu Yangsen told her to look, there they are. They welcome her so warmly. Shen Sanya was very scared and said that they had all turned into zombies. Wu Yangsen said that he calls them that they became like that after miasma entered their bodies and this island is called their abode the dead abyss. Shen Sanya cowered in fear and exclaimed, what? After that, Wu Yangsen waved his hands and used his strength, pulling the dead into the quicksand. Shen Sanya exclaimed, and in his opinion, this is a beginner village. He is a deceiver. Wu Yangsen asked when did he lie to her. Their intelligence is below average, so they are perfect for leveling up beginners. He pointed to the dead and told her to look for herself. He placed a magic circle, which they can see perfectly well, but they still climb right here. Shen Sanya said that they were indeed quite stupid. Suddenly a dead man appeared from under the sand, and Shen Sanya got scared and Wu Yangsen said that everything is fine. The magic circle creates quicksand 160 centimeters deep. These corpses have rather fragile bodies, so they cannot get out of this trap on their own. So they don't have to try too hard and just kick them over the heads. Shen Sanya said that some of them were already completely stuck in the sand. Wu Yangsen confirmed her words and said that after decomposition, miasma and other bacteria will become excellent fertilizers for the soil, so training them combines business with pleasure. Shin Sanya thought that he calculated everything down to the smallest detail. In games, he acted exactly the same. Suddenly, she noticed that all the dead were stuck in the sand and asked, Is their invasion over? Wu Yangsen replied that they appear in waves. The next wave will be after they deal with these corpses. A spear appeared in his hand, and he said that let her take this weapon and have fun from the heart. Shen Sanya hesitantly took the weapon and said that she would try. She thought that she needed to kill them to level up. Although she already has experience in such games, it is in this reality that everything feels somehow different. Wu Yangsen noticed her doubts and took the weapon, saying that she was thinking too much. Let her imagine that she is a martial artist, and let her think of corpses as pumpkins, one hit and she's done. Shen Sanya exclaimed, what kind of pumpkin? Let him stop talking nonsense already. Wu Yangsen mimicked her and Shen Sanya gritted her teeth and thought that she was afraid. She's such a coward, she's afraid to do it, but she doesn't want to be left behind. Oh well, she'll do it. She raised her weapon and thought that now she would split their skulls. After that, she stabbed the dead man's spear and a glow began to emanate from it. She asked, what is this? Wu Yangsen replied that this glow is called the true essence. As long as the world moves and breathes organisms, it exists. Shen Sanya touched the glow and asked, did she absorb it? But so far there are no changes. She smiled and asked, did she just collect experience from them? How much does she need to collect to level up? Wu Yangsen replied that it is not as simple as she thinks. Once collected, the true essence needs to be cultivated to become stronger. That's the whole point. The true essence becomes the true Kai in her body. There are nine energy attributes in total. Wind, lightning, ice, fire, water, earth, wood, poison, and curse. Shen Sanya asked in surprise, nine. Why so much? He replied that the true essence is a clot of neutral energy, so during cultivation it will have to independently choose the appropriate element. She asked, and should she learn all this? He smiled and said that she should not worry about it. Now her task is to accumulate as much Kai as possible. Sounds boring, but she needs to learn the basics first. While Shen Sanya was killing the dead, Wu Yangsen said that there are four stages of divine formation in this world. After she leaves behind the foundations, she will move into the realm of purity, then into the realm of generation, and finally into the pre-divine realm to become a deity. 
They also have their own levels. The most important characteristics for cultivators are spiritual strength and true Kai. The higher the level, the more indicators. Spiritual strength is restored over time on its own, but true Kai needs to be accumulated in the body for a long time and persistently. In general, let her just slowly raise the level and become stronger. Therefore, the village for beginners is very suitable for leveling up. Shen Sanya absorbed the experience again and thought that everything was much easier than at first glance. Well, she'll try. She turned her gaze to U Yangsen and thought that he was watching her. U Yangsen sat on a stone and put a cookie in his mouth, saying that he would sit here and rest for now. Maybe she wants him to share a tasty treat with her. Shen Sanya thought, is he seriously sitting and eating here? Does anything bother him at all? She asked, should I eat now? Wu Yangsen replied with a smile that he could already see the Perdon star scolding him for this. He would ask how dare he waste his precious time on such nonsense instead of training. But he is far from here, so he can eat in peace. Shen Sanya remained silent and, hearing the roar of the zombies near the rock on which they stood, thought, how can a normal person eat calmly in such conditions? Zombies have a certain timing and the number is always the same. Wu Yangsen correctly said that they appear in waves. She called out to him, and he asked, what is it? She said that this place looks like an ordinary location with well-designed textures, and the local monsters have a certain script for the number and time of appearance. Somehow it doesn't look like the game in reality. Wu Yangsen smiled and said that he called this place Newcomer Village because this is where he appeared when he entered the game. He visited many parts of this world in search of the best place to level up, but this turned out to be the most convenient, and in the process, he slightly changed this place to suit himself. She asked, did he change the place? He confirmed her words and asked if she remembers the name of this place. A dead abyss, because there used to be a canyon underneath them. Shen Sanya was very surprised, and U Yangsen said that during the war between deities and demons, hundreds of those killed in battle were dumped here, their bodies were saturated with miasma, and after that they rose from the dead. But the whole mechanic boils down to cutting off heads, so he nicknamed them zombies. Shen Sanya thought about it and said that although there are still differences. In ordinary zombies, the muscles are atrophied, so they move rather slowly. But these are quite fast, and they also have a huge thirst for blood. He just entered the game and immediately appeared in such a place. It must have been very scary. Wu Yangsen smiled and replied that everything was fine. He remembered how he appeared in this place, and the pre-dawn star exclaimed, Did he completely hit his head? Jumping into the abyss is tantamount to suicide. Wu Yangsen looked at him blankly, and then pointed down with a smile and said that he had looked at the map. There was a big lake down there, so he wouldn't die. Well, that's what he thinks. The Perdon star shouted that he wasn't talking about that now. He is still too weak. He needs to find another place to level up. Wu Yangsen replied that if he does everything as he says, then he has spent hundreds of years leveling up. He doesn't want to do it for so long. He wants to increase his level as quickly as possible, and he is afraid for the demons on the way. Wouldn't it be more logical to come to a place where even demons would be afraid to go? He smiled and asked, Besides, death is also part of the game, isn't it? The Perdon star exclaimed that this was nonsense. He couldn't play with his life. Even if he manages to be revived again, he will lose everything he earned before. U Yangsen replied that this was great. Shouldn't he take advantage of the opportunity while his life is worthless? This is a great chance to learn more about the game. The Perdon star exclaimed, What was he going to find out there? He has no idea what awaits him below. Wu Yangsen began to fall backwards into the abyss and replied that it was more interesting this way. The Perdon star was very frightened and called out to Wu Yangsen and he waved his hand. Some time passed after that moment. Wu Yangsen woke up screaming and the Perdon star sitting next to him asked, Is he awake? Wu Yangsen said that he should have fallen into the lake. Why did he die? The Perdon star looked at him and thought that he did not care at all that he had lost his life. He said he was such an idiot. He gave him a scroll and told him to look at it. Wu Yangsen asked, what is this? He replied that this scroll describes everything that is currently known about the abyss. Let him read the information and finally understand how dangerous this place is. Next time, let him think before he climbs somewhere. He does everything his own way and doesn't listen to anyone, and he also helps him. Wu Yangsen took the scroll and thought that it turned out that he was not just a bot, but also an assistant. He rolled up the scroll and told Tai Bai that enough talking, he understood everything. The Perdon star asked what he called it. Wu Yangsen replied that he named him Tai Bai. They came out of the cave and he asked where they are now. 
at the bottom of the abyss. It turns out that since he was reborn here, the Soul Stone is nearby. The Dawn Star replied that the Soul Stone can appear in almost any place. It changed its location when he died. Wu Yangsen thought for a moment and said that apparently his body was 3D printed. It turns out that this is where he responds, he had to remember it so that next time he could easily navigate the area. Pradon Star thought, what is he talking about? He doesn't understand him at all. After that, Wu Yangsen pulled his dead body from the lake with a sword in his throat and climbed onto the shore. He pulled the sword out of his dead body and said that it was good that he had thought to pierce himself with the sword before dying so as not to turn into a zombie. The Dawn Star said that he rejoices early, the miasma can still penetrate his body. Wu Yangsen said that then he would have to finish him off on his own. His corpse growled and he asked already. So fast? Wu Yangsen's dead body looked at him with a smile and the Dawn Star told him to be careful. At that same moment, Wu Yangsen cut off the head of his dead body and purple blood splashed all around. The pre-Dawn Star was very surprised and Wu Yangsen, raising his head, said that they correctly say that a person's worst enemy is himself. The Pradon star remained silent and thought that he had so quickly and accurately beheaded his own corpse. Usually such swordsmanship is achieved through many years of grueling training. What did this guy do before? Wu Yangsen looked at the head in his hand and said that only he could defeat himself. Suddenly other dead men looked into the cave and roared loudly. Wu Yangsen closed his eyes at such a loud sound and asked what was going on. This gave him a headache. Is this how they greet guests? After that, Wu Yangsen began to fight off the attacks of the dead and, piercing one of them, told him to die. Zombies began to climb the cliff towards Wu Yangsen and he began to run away and call Tai Bai. The Pradon star appeared and said that he was here. Wu Yangsen asked, where was he? He thought he had lost it. The Dawn star replied that there were too many zombies here. He thought that it would be better for him to hide in the Divine Scroll. Wu Yangsen grabbed him and said that he had found the time. After a while, they finally escaped from the zombies and Wu Yangsen lay down on the ground, saying that it's finally quiet. These zombies are terribly noisy. The Perdon star asked, was he really able to get out of the water unscathed with the body and physical capabilities of an ordinary mortal? Wu Yangsen laughed and said that, of course, he had played a lot of games. They often had such moments with zombies. He really doesn't like them. The Dawn Star said that he dared to suggest that these were not just games. Wu Yangsen said that these were virtual reality games. Thanks to modern technologies, they have created VR installations that, through a sensor, transmit information about his body and movements to the virtual world. That's how he learned to fight and run. He once tried to repeat the same thing in the real world, but he did not have enough strength and endurance for this. However, everything is different here. As soon as you raise the level, all indicators immediately increase. The Pradon star continued to listen to speeches that were incomprehensible to him, and after that he said that in any case, there was still a lot of training ahead. While he was escaping, he was able to kill several zombies, and quite a few of the true essence appeared because of this. While there is time, he cultivates it into true Kai. Wu Yangsen asked, that is, the true essence is cultivated in Kai. He called up the characteristics panel, and the Pradon star was very surprised to see that the characteristics had increased so much. He said that he could already cultivate Essence Kai. Wu Yangsen was happy and said that he had become stronger. Now everything will be even cooler. The Pradon star thought that he was a genius who had achieved such results at the initial stage. He thinks that over time he will not stop there and every time the numbers will get higher. Wu Yangsen was delighted and said that after all, he had a good idea with this abyss. Pradon star ignored him and thought that he had previously thought that he was acting rashly due to his inexperience but now he understands that everything written in the Divine Scroll is true. He underestimated him. This guy is not as easy as he seems. Wu Yangsen turned to him and asked, how do they cultivate Kai? Maybe they meditate. Can he read sutras? Let him show something. The Dawn Star ignored him and thought that at the same time he was really acting like a child. Wu Yangsen did not wait for his answer and said that he would then read something himself. The path that allows a person to ascend to the heights and stars is a worthy path. The pre-dawn star frowned and thought that he was annoying him so much. Wu Yangsen laughed and suddenly purple blood gushed out from his mouth and the pre-dawn star asked worriedly what happened. Just now everything was fine. Wu Yangsen began to choke. He fell to the ground, tore his clothes and saw purple marks on his body. The dawn star said that the poison had spread throughout his body. But how? Where do misums come from? 
Wu Yangsen said that in the Divine Scroll, he only saw a description of the effects of miasma on corpses. Is there any information about poisoning by toxic fumes in living people? The Pradhan star looked down and said that no living person had ever been here before, so he couldn't say that. Wu Yangsen said that his ears were still ringing. Apparently, this is one of the symptoms of infection. Perhaps the miasma got onto his body from the zombies they killed on the way here. He took the sword and asked if he dies from poison, will the soul stone be able to appear here? Or will this be the end of his story forever? The Perdon star looked away and said that this was his fault, he had to explore this place. Wu Yangsen said with a smile that he didn't expect that he would also start to worry about him. The Perdon star got angry and thought that he was annoying him so much. Wu Yangsen said that now is not the time to joke, he needs to get rid of the poison. He pointed the tip of the sword in his direction and thought that the shortest path was through rebirth. Pradhan Star asked, is he sure? Wu Yangsen responded by asking, does he have a choice? The Pradhan Star agreed, and after that, Wu Yangsen stabbed a blade into his body and said that they would see each other again. He smiled and said that he wouldn't be bored without him. The Dawn Star thought that finding the right path was only part of the task. And on his path to the revival of the gods, there will still be many obstacles. He bowed and said that he obeyed him. Let him give it his all. Currently, the Perdon star was sitting inside the divine scrolls in his real body and thinking about his recent conversation with Wu Yangsen. Wu Yangsen said that they need to think about something else now. Let him check a few things for him. Then the Perdon star asked, is he sure of his decision to go into the abyss alone? Wu Yangsen replied that he remade the abyss. What can happen? The Perdon star returned from his memories and, after thinking a little about the abyss, decided to open the map. He thought that he had set up magical seals that caused quicksand to restrict the movement of monsters. Regular zombies don't pose much of a threat. He saw red circles on the map that indicated places where zombies accumulated and thought that at the bottom of the abyss they were used to gathering in a bunch, which increases the speed and number of Mieses spread. He looked closely at the accumulation of red ones, and then right before his eyes, the spots merged into one huge one and worriedly thought, what is this? Meanwhile, Wu Yangsen and Shen Sanya were in the abyss, and she asked, did he fill up this canyon in order to keep the rest of the zombies in the pit? Wu Yangsen replied that it is not that simple. Containing so many corpses in one place means constantly creating and spreading miasma, plus you need to make sure that zombies don't crowd into one place. Usually they do not attack each other, but if there are too many of them, some may simply be run over. Shen Sanya said that this is not what she is talking about. Wu Yangsen snapped his fingers, summoning flying blades and said that he would show her. They descended from the flying cliff on a sword and Shen Sanya said that she was interested in how this colossus even stayed on such a flat surface. Wu Yangsen said that when miasma comes into contact with the skin, it causes toxin poisoning. He uses a protective barrier to isolate them from the infected area so she doesn't have to worry. If she feels tinnitus, let him tell him immediately. This is also a symptom of miasma infection. They went down into the cave and Shen Sanya said that this cave is so huge. Wu Yangsen said that she had already noticed that zombies appear in waves with a certain timing and their number is always the same. They are very sensitive to the movements of living creatures on the surface so they always attack in one group which is very annoying. That's why he was running things here a little underground. They went down even lower and Shen Sanya, seeing some kind of mechanism, asked what it was. Wu Yangsen said that when a certain number of zombies accumulate here, they push this damper with their weight and come out, and all the dampers are equidistant from each other, so when rotating, the zombies are cut off in the same number. Shen Sanya asked, is this normal? So keep these zombies. What if something strange happens to them? For example, some kind of mutation will occur in the miasma due to the conditions of their detention. Wu Yangsen said that there are similar mechanisms in every area of the underground labyrinth, and each of them can be controlled. In addition to the mill, they also use other spells to control the situation. All information is displayed in the heavenly book. Suddenly Shen Sanya grabbed her head and asked what is that sound? It's like there's a buzzing in her ears. Wu Yangsen said that the concentration of miasma in this area suddenly increased. He will put up an additional barrier. He covered her with extra protection, and she asked, will he be okay? He replied that he had encountered this before, so he could say that he had developed immunity. Suddenly the mechanism broke, and the crowd of zombies was crushed by someone's huge paw. A huge mutated zombie crawled out of the depths of the cave, and Shen Sanya exclaimed that it was a giant zombie. 
Little zombies got together and became a huge zombie. Wu Yangsen remained silent and then looked at it with admiration and asked, This is cool, right? Shen Sanya was surprised by his words and took a closer look at the huge zombie. She said that she had the feeling that all the hatred of humanity had accumulated in him. Wu Yangsen said that she called it hatred, and he, by the way, tried very hard to tame them and improve their living conditions. Shen Sanya said that he talks about such terrible things so casually. Wu Yangsen smiled and asked, What difference does it make if for the players these monsters are still negative characters? Suddenly the zombies, in the body of a huge mutant, began to speak and turned to the divine messenger. Wu Yangsen immediately looked at him, and the zombies said that they were asking, they didn't want to fight him. So many years have passed. When did they become such monsters? They were human, but even after death, they still rot. What is this? It all went to hell. Shen Sanya covered her ears with her hands and said that she felt as if she was hearing 1,000 voices. Wu Yangsen became serious and said that they should leave. After that, they made a hole in the ground and jumped out of the abyss, quickly rising into the sky. He took a closer look at Shen Sanya and said that even though he had placed two protective barriers on her, she still felt all the horror. Is she better now? She sighed and said that she had just heard the dead. This was due to a large accumulation of miasma, and they turned to it. Shen Sanya asked, does he mean that that mutant recognized him? Do they have consciousness? He replied that their intelligence was below average, but they were not capable of feeling anger and hatred. The one who created this world is a real devil. Shen Sanya narrowed her eyes and thought, simply put, is he happy to be that same devil? Suddenly a mutant appeared from underground and tried to grab them, but could not and Shen Sanya exclaimed that he escaped from the cave. Wu Yangsen smiled and told her to see how persistent he was. Shen Sanya said in fear that they should leave here quickly. Wu Yangsen replied with a grin that there was no need for that. Their training is not over yet. He hopes that the big zombie will be able to show something more interesting. Shen Sanya looked at his face and thought that his expression was different. His aura had changed so much. She smiled and thought he was so cute. After that, Wu Yangsen put something on her ear and mentally asked, Can she hear him? She confirmed his words and he mentally said that she could communicate with him mentally. Let her try. This is a device for telepathic communication within the team. Thanks to this device, they will be able to communicate even if they are far from each other. By the way, he will share with her a couple of skills for cultivating Kai. She was surprised and asked if this was still training. Wu Yangsen jumped from the sword towards the mutant and Shen Sanya told him to be careful. She was very scared when she saw that the mutant was about to grab him and told him to be careful. But Wu Yangsen stopped the mutant's hand and said that he would not say much. After that, he threw the mutant to the ground and mentally told Shen Sanya that zombies alternate between defense and offense when attacking, so he uses the basic true Kai skills of defense and shape change. He summoned several magical spears and said that transforming the shape of the body gives great freedom of choice. Thanks to this skill, he can create any weapon and equipment. The mutant zombie attacked Wu Yangsen again, and he, stopping the attack, said that the most important thing was to coordinate both defense and shape-shifting techniques in order to hit hard enough without losing too much energy on defense. After that, he waved his hand and, thrusting several hundred spears into the mutant, said that the most important thing is that, compared to spells, the use of basic techniques takes away much less true Kai. A very beneficial skill, he advises her to use it more often. Shin Sanya exclaimed, is he really thinking about this now? Suddenly the mutant growled and Wu Yangsen said that usually zombies grab their arms and legs during an attack, but this one tries to bite. He understands that he appeared due to the unification of a crowd of zombies into one giant one, but he is still too big. It tires him. Even if he destroys his hands, he can easily grow new ones. Somehow everything is quite clear. No, we need to act differently. Shen Sanya said that no matter how you look at it, iron cannot be made into steel. Wu Yangsen looked at the mutant again and said that most likely this big zombie is not an ordinary boss, but something else. Along with these thoughts, he summoned several hundred more spears and again thrust them into the mutant, causing a strong dust to rise. The body of the huge zombie disappeared and Shen Sanya thought in surprise that he had killed it with one blow. What she was doing before was a pitiful semblance of a battle. Suddenly, Wu Yangsen began to swear and said that they came here so that she could improve her level. Oh well, all is not lost yet. Let her go here and collect the remaining Kai from this zombie. 
Chen Sanya descended to the ground and thought that, after all, apparently this thing was the boss of this location. She saw glowing clots on the ground and told him to look at it. Are the lights on the ground the true Kai from those zombies? Wu Yangsen replied that this is not entirely true. The light from them is quite dim, which can only mean two things. Either they were created by someone spiritually, or they were used to strengthen monsters. Most of these zombies were cultivators when they were alive, so it was no surprise that they still had energy left in their bodies. Shen Sanya was upset and thought during life. Wu Yangsen noticed her reaction and said that they didn't do anything wrong, they were already dead. All they can do is collect as much true essence as possible for cultivation. Although there are already plenty of them in stock, so this is not necessary. He began to rake clots of energy into a bag and Shen Sanya said that he said that this was not necessary, but his hands were itching. Wu Yangsen replied that he could not control it. After that, the Perdon star came to them with a bright flash and said that he had finally found them. Shen Sanya called out to him and Wu Yangsen asked why he was looking for them. Perdon star replied that he noticed an anomalous monster on the map in the area of the abyss, so he flew in as soon as he could. He turned to Shen Sanya and asked if anything happened to her. She smiled and replied that everything was fine, she had earned a whole bunch of true essence and could make a good living out of it. Wu Yangsen said that he told him not to worry about all sorts of trifles. Is there any progress in their investigation? The Dawn Star replied that he had learned something. Recently, unusual changes have occurred in the mortal world. He had better look at everything with his own eyes. If you believe the assumption, then the appearance of other reborns has been discovered in this world. Wu Yangsen said that then they should go to the Heavenly Office and continue their discussion there. Shen Sanya asked the Heavenly Office. The Perdon Star unrolled the scroll and told Shen Sanya that she should follow him. After that, he went inside the scroll and Shen Sanya asked, Does this scroll also replace a teleport? Wu Yangsen pointed to the scroll and said ladies first. After that, Shen Sanya passed through the scroll and found herself in a completely different place. The stars were shining in the sky, and everything around was flooded with a black sea. Shen Sanya appeared in this space and looked at her feet, saying that they were standing on water. Wu Yangsen replied that this is not water, they are inside the Empyrean Anthology. It literally means an ocean of knowledge. In the past, when Wu Yangsen had just begun his journey in this world, he was not yet inside the scroll. He sat on the crystal and thought that he had moved through time and space. In this world, there are gods, monsters, and resurrection points, just like in regular games. And so he died and rose again for the third time. As he already said, this is his third life. It's still difficult for him to explain all this, because right now there's a whole bunch of zombies at his respawn site. The soul stone will soon disappear, so he needs to figure out how to get rid of them as quickly as possible. The pre-dawn star appeared behind him and said that there were too many zombies around so it would be better if he went inside the heavenly book for a while. Wu Yangsen was afraid of him and quietly asked how to get there. The Dawn Star threw a scroll over him and said that they did not need to go anywhere. After that, they moved inside the Celestial Book and the pre-dawn star, appearing to Wu Yangsen in his true appearance, said that they were inside the book. This place exists separately from the rest of the world and is absolutely independent of it. This is not stated in the heavenly book, but through the aura that flows between the two worlds, he can observe everything that happens. Wu Yangsen took a closer look at him, and the Perdon star said that the Inkai Sea under his feet was the original form of the heavenly book. Wu Yangsen waved his hand and told him to wait. Who is he anyway? After that, the Perdon star explained everything to him, and Wu Yangsen asked, That is, is he the Perdon star in his real form? He confirmed his words and said that he is the great spirit of the heavenly book, living here from time immemorial and in charge of the history of this world, therefore his body cannot leave the boundaries of the heavenly book. The image appearing outside of it is its clone. Wu Yangsen said that it means that he is the keeper of this heavenly book, he is engaged in an inventory of history and everything that happens in this world. And he sees everything on the book as on the touch screen of a smartphone. Perdon Star thought, touch screen. He said that after they entered here, the scroll became invisible to the monsters in the world. From here they can move to any safe place. In this way they can avoid a dangerous battle. Wu Yangsen smiled and told Tai Bai that it was so convenient. He thanked him and the Perdon star became a little embarrassed, saying that his duty was to help the emperor. The duties of the guardians included doing everything in their power. They did not need to be thanked for this. And let him not call him that. 
Wu Yangsen put his hands behind his head and said that he was bored and had nothing to do here, so he wanted to leave. The Dawn Star said that there was actually one more thing he should ask of him. Ink began to accumulate to him, and he said that only the Keeper can write and correct the Heavenly Book, so sometimes there are situations in which it is very difficult to avoid mistakes and omissions because their bodies cannot leave this place. He is the reincarnation of the Emperor mentioned in the prophecy, so he will also use the Heavenly Book. So he hopes that he too can understand what the Book of Nine Heavens really is. Liu Yangsen said that looking at him, he got the impression that they were definitely not here for training. The Pradhan Star said that now under their feet is the real form of the heavenly book in which he existed for several 1,000 years as a soul. The ink rose into the air, and he said that this ink was one with him. He can directly see the knowledge from the book of nine heavens one by one, and he will pass them all on to him. U Yangsen replied that this is interesting, he is ready. Pradhan Star said that let him concentrate, it is very risky. If he cannot accept them, he will die. Yu Yangsen smiled and said that they had known each other for several days. Does he think he will back down? The Pradhan star agreed with him and said that let him close his eyes, the true Yu Yangsen will wake up now. Ink began to circle around Yu Yangsen, then it reached towards his head and he grunted in pain. Ink poured into his body through his mouth and eye sockets, his whole body was filled with it and after some time he woke up. The Pradhan star noticed that he opened his eyes and said worriedly that he had woken up. Wu Yangsen turned over on his side and said that he should not make noise, he would still sleep. The Pradhan star began to shake him and said that this should not be done, let him look at him. All day and night he was in a semi-conscious state, completely delirious, and he was not sure that he would be able to wake up at all. Wu Yangsen replied that after his ink, he had the feeling that his skull had been opened and all the contents had been put through a blender, after which anyone would fall. He ran his hand through his hair and said that his hair had grown so quickly. The Pradhan star said that he would soon be back to normal. All the information in the Book of Nine Heavens described in it up to this point is now in his head. Wu Yangsen said that he does not feel that he has become smarter. This is fine. The Pradhan star looked at him and after a short pause said that he should just not think about it. Does he remember what happened when he first read the scroll? He said that this is the so-called gaming system. All the contents of this system are information from the heavenly book, but before his appearance, no one had ever called it that way. Wu Yangsen asked, I think he told him the same thing that time? Donstar said he thought he figured it out on his own, because this system was created by his subconscious, so that he himself is able to fully understand this world. Wu Yangsen thought for a moment and asked, by perceiving the world as a computer game, did he make this reality one? This is so cool, he admits that he is still too addicted to games. The Dawn Star said that all he could do at the moment was to provide him with the knowledge of the heavenly book and allow him to dispose of it at his discretion. Two kingdoms, four races, whether it be Taoist mantras or historical facts from the scriptures, natural science or art. The heavenly book will obey his perception and will, allowing him to use all the wisdom described in it. The ability is unique and has no limitations or limits. How he uses it is up to him. He called it awakened and Wu Yangsen said that there is no problem with it, he uses it to the fullest. The Dawn Star said that he had to say that he was still a little worried about his appearance. As time passed, Wu Yangsen and the pre-Dawn Star looked at the scroll and Wu Yangsen said that after several hours of unconsciousness and delirium, the health bar readings dropped greatly. The accumulated true essence was cultivated into true Kai, and the ability to use the heavenly book appeared in the skill graph. Since he can see his own characteristics panel, then he should also see others. Wu Yangsen noticed a new inscription in the magic section called Divine Creation. He told the Pradhan star to see if a new column had opened. There is also a name. The Pradhan star said that he should not forget that he himself can give the skills a name. Wu Yangsen was surprised and said that he had just started, he could do so many things. The Dawn star said that he is a divine creature, omniscient and omnipotent. Even during the heyday of the Empire of the Gods, no one dared to say that he knew and could do so much. If he can reach the realm of divine creation, then the legends will not lie, he will truly become the Supreme Emperor. Wu Yangsen said that it sounded very mysterious, but isn't he already an emperor? Currently, Wu Yangsen was explaining to Shen Sanya where they were, and then pointed to the Pradhan Star and said that this is the real body of the Pradhan Star, let her get to know him, here he is in all his glory. Shen Sanya was delighted to see him, and the Pradhan star, bowing slightly to her, said that he was pleased to meet her. 
U Yangsen was upset and told her that he usually sees him on the surface when he is small, but here he is so tall, he was so surprised by this. Shen Sanya said that he is a real immortal. Is it weird then to have multiple body shapes? Wu Yangsen remained silent and after a short pause said that he was actually also immortal and very strong. Shen Sanya replied that this was definitely the case. Wu Yangsen was offended and said that they would return to the previous topic. He turned to Tai Bai and asked what he could tell about the situation in the spiritual arteries. The Perdon star pointed to the canvas and said that let him look here. Rebirths, a person appears in the soul stone, which is therefore sent to the collection point of the spiritual arteries. In the past, there were no exceptions at this stage, just like this time when Shen Sanya arrived here. But yesterday, an anomalous soul stone was spotted in the mortal realm. Wu Yangsen said that apparently this has nothing to do with the impulse of the spiritual arteries. Pradhan Star said that if they compare the spiritual arteries to a river through which spiritual energy flows, then they can assume that the riverbed is completely dried up. Over the course of several years, demons clustered in certain areas of the spiritual arteries and eventually blocked the flow. Shen Sanya noticed something on the canvas and told Yu Yangsen to look here. There is something wrong with the spiritual arteries. It seems as if they are stretching somewhere and concentrating in one place. Yu Yangsen replied that it was him. Shen Sanya sighed and the Pradhan star said that the last soul stone should not appear now. Maybe someone called for it. He knows very well that previously they deliberately avoided places where there were large concentrations of demons in the spiritual artery areas. Wu Yangsen agreed and said that it was not very convenient without the ability to create a resurrection point in those places. The Dawn Star said that he never approved of his murderous method of cultivating body and spirit. Shen Sanya asked if there was any additional danger at the intersection of the two worlds, the demonic and the mortal. She knows that if something happens, she can be resurrected, but... Wu Yangsen interrupted her and said that they should go there anyway to check the situation. Shen Sanya agreed with him, and he said that the problem is that they do not know the exact location of the spiritual artery. On their map, they see only a small speck. It will be more difficult than finding a needle in a haystack. Shen Sanya asked, Is this some kind of city? Wu Yangsen confirmed her words and said that this is a city ruled by demons Jai Longgang. Meanwhile, in that very city, a reborn fell out of the crystal. Her whole body was covered in blood, and she quietly asked for help, and after that her eyes closed tiredly. Meanwhile, Shen Sanya was happy and said that the next stop was Jai Longgang. Wu Yangsen told her to wait and asked, did she forget why she was saving energy? To lay the foundation. This is important, she can't leave until she's finished. After that, they sat down opposite each other and Wu Yangsen said that thanks to that monster, she now has enough Kai. Now let her begin the purification. She needs to repeat after him. Purifying Kai is the basis of cultivation and should be as natural as breathing. At the same time, true Kai has nine attributes that are selected during cultivation. The attribute chosen mainly depends on what she wants to level up. There is health, stamina, strength, agility, intelligence, and nature. Cultivating Kai with different attributes will increase a certain base strength. He showed her a list of attributes on which it was written that wind related to agility. Thunder is strength and agility, ice is strength and health. Water agility, earth body, wood health, poison and spell mind. Shen Sanya tiredly touched her head and said that it is already difficult to remember the first attributes, let alone this. Wu Yangsen asked, so what does she think? What will she pump first? Shen Sanya thought about it and asked, maybe protection. Wu Yangsen said that he didn't know. In fact, there is no simple concept of defensive power, for example, full health as long as there are no herbs. The value depends on physical fitness and life expectancy. Endurance reflects resistance to internal and external injury, disease, and the ability to self-heal. Defense is the basic skill of protecting the body of true Kai, which depends on the same and has little to do with attributes. In addition, if the defense is high, it is usually a roll type that resists damage and will always be defeated. Shen Sanya was upset and said that he was right. She thought she had answered incorrectly. Wu Yangsen said that she didn't need to worry about it because he was there. Shen Sanya blushed a little and agreed. Wu Yangsen said that besides, she is a beginner, she still needs to increase her vitality at an early stage. Let it add physical strength and health, civil engineering. Shen Sanya said that she understood, then they will start with 40. Wu Yangsen said that there are other ideas. Pure agility, 
Feng Shui Master Speed. Double Strength and Speed the King of Thunder. Blood Attack a Double Sky of Ice and Fire. He can provide detailed guidance. Shen Sanya said that she was more concerned about something else. How did he add points to himself? Wu Yangsen proudly replied that, of course, his level is the maximum. Shen Sanya smiled awkwardly and said that it was obvious. Wu Yangsen said that, in addition, the two attributes of poison and curse only complement the spirit, which is based on her mental state. Shen Sanya told him to wait. There is something else in the main attribute. Isn't it the same in true Kai attribute? Wu Yangsen shrugged and said that he recommended that she read more books. Shen Sanya was upset and replied that she did not like to read. The Pradhan star told her to calm down. She looked at him, and he said that the process of accumulating Kai is very tedious, and it is necessary to lay a solid foundation. Shen Sanya nodded and replied that she understood. After that, she closed her eyes and concentrated, thinking that she needed to accumulate less into more and then break through to new worlds. Wu Yangsen said that after the foundation is built, the upper limit of spiritual power and true Kai will increase. In other words, the current true value of Kai is always complete. After successfully forming the foundation and raising it, it's like an appetite that only gets bigger. The Prudon star looked at her and said that this would happen soon. Wu Yangsen replied that he knew. Suddenly Shen Sanya felt something and thought, did she succeed? Maybe, but she has no sense of accomplishment. But there is a fanatical absorption of the mind. She wants even more. Suddenly Wu Yangsen touched her head and she woke up. He asked, is she okay? How is she feeling? She replied that for a second she thought she had gone crazy. Wu Yangsen smiled and said that maybe she will turn into a demon, who knows? Shen Sanya exclaimed, what did he say? Is it really such a terrible thing to sneak into the kingdom? Wu Yangsen said that everything went well. What's terrible? Isn't he nearby? It is here. The accumulation of true Kai does not interfere in any way, so everything is stable. Shen Sanya agreed and thought that fortunately the foundation was built successfully. If something goes wrong, she is afraid of what she might do. Wu Yangsen said that after the breakthrough, there is a long process of Kai accumulation. Then he will introduce her to the spells, but let her not use it too often. True Kai is greatly consumed in the process, so let her remember to conserve it. The Pradhan star took a closer look at Shen Sanya and said that she should have proper rest, combine work and rest. Shen Sanya was happy and asked, Is this true? Wu Yangsen asked, What's wrong with him? He never told him that. He got up and said that he would go into the city to look for the reborn and let her rest. She can stay here or return to the palace. After that time passed, the three of them found themselves outside Longgang and Wu Yangsen looked at Shen Sanya, who had previously insisted on joining him. He stopped and said that she could come with them, but besides changing clothes, there were a couple more things that she should remember. They are not people in this world and let her not tell anyone about it. He looked at Tai Bai and said that this does not concern him, he can talk about everything. It's true. The Perdon star said that he should be more serious. Wu Yangsen told Shen Sanya that she knew that there were two kingdoms and four clans. One thousand years ago, in a battle between immortal fairies and demons, the immortal clan was destroyed by three others. To this day, immortals are still hated by everyone and turn pale when they are spoken of. There is even a taboo on the word, cultivate an immortal, only cultivate is allowed. Leaving Changgong, all living beings become their enemies. However, with her current level of cultivation, normally no one would be able to harm her. After the clan was destroyed, the demon clan returned to their kingdom, the demon and humans coexisted in peace. During the war, alliance relations quickly collapsed. After the war, the vitality of the human race suffered greatly, and demons began to rule the world. Then a split occurred within the clan, forming two factions, the sect and the hunting faction. The hunting faction is more like monsters in their concepts, and they advocate for the entire separatist party to occupy the mountain like a true king. Most places on earth are under the control of the demon sect clan, for example. There are hundreds of countries and people and demons live together. In the end, whoever is the king on the surface is actually under the control of the demon sect. Almost 1,000 years of development also gave rise to huge groups of mixed races and half-demons. The main social system is hierarchy. There are four levels of demon clan. Demon clan, werewolf clan, half-demon clan, and human clan. Later, they will go to the city and gather information to find the reborn. Tai Bai will follow them invisibly and be the voice of the command. 
Let her remember, they are similar to the human race, so they should wear these clothes and act low-key. Shen Sanya asked, reservedly. Will he also behave with restraint? Wu Yangsen replied that of course it is, he is not an idiot. Shen Sanya smiled and thought that he was really so smart. After that, Wu Yangsen smiled and said that they should go. After a while, they entered the city of Jai Longgang, where representatives of different races were walking on the street. Shen Sanya looked around and thought that there were so many people with ears. She mentally asked Wu Yangsen, are all the residents of the city half demons or demons? Wu Yangsen replied that basically everyone she saw was the human race. Mixed cities appeared very early. After several generations, most of the human races mixed. But race does not change by changing bloodline and appearance, at least in the mortal world, be it human, half-demon, or demon, it is a kind of hierarchy. What status he was born with is his race. If she wanted to see a human race similar to humans, they could probably find them in the remnant of the abyss. She got upset and said that she remembers. This is the place where corpses were thrown after the war. Wu Yangsen replied that she was right. There are hundreds of places like this in this world. Suddenly, they heard the crack of a whip and looked in the direction of the sound. They saw a rhinoceros carrying a cart with demons and Wu Yangsen said that you must be important people. Shen Sanya asked, does he know them? Wu Yangsen replied that, of course, she and Tai Bai found out everything while she was training. The lord of Jai Longgang city, Bin Chikyu, is a half-demon of scorpion blood. Next to him sits his lady, the snake demon Ashaij Jin. She is their hunting faction of the orthodox demon clan. Shen Sanya asked him to wait and asked, Are they the spirit of a snake and a scorpion? Is there a zucchini, grandpa, and the like? Wu Yangsen replied that she was too carried away. On the streets of the city, they immediately began to greet the lord of the city and the golden lady. Shen Sanya said that the demon is the lord of the city. This is a great sight. Wu Yangsen said that he is a lord, and he has all the military and political power of the city and surrounding counties in his hands, so he rules here. Wu Yangsen pointed to the carriage with a smile and said that the lord and his wife were very interesting. The lord is a half-demon, and his wife is a demon, a class higher than himself. She sees. Here he is, a half-demon. Shen Sanya said that he looked quite happy. Meanwhile, a Shai Jin in the carriage said that she wanted to go home. Her husband said that everything was fine, the healers were watching over her, she didn't need to be around all the time. It's good to get out of the house sometimes. She turned to him and asked if maybe she would feel better now. He sadly replied that it would not be so easy, her condition. Suddenly the man turned to the crowd and said that he was conveying the Lord's order, the dragon had awakened, a black tide was coming, the port of Koron would be the first to suffer. They need to build sea defenses against the black tide and repair the damage. Every man and woman is required to work for 30 days. Children born on the same day must be sacrificed in accordance with the law. Every family with a newborn child must register the true date of birth, and those who fail to do so will be severely punished, and those who do not report will be punished with imprisonment. The city residents began to whisper and Shen Sanya asked what was the matter. Wu Yangsen replied that dragons are the pets of demons left in the mortal world, only the immortal world can provide for them. Once every ten years, dragons wake up and raise a black tide that floods the dragon port. To worship the dragon, children were thrown into the water for sacrifice. She asked, does the dragon eat children? Wu Yangsen replied that it doesn't matter whether the dragon eats them or not, the sacrifice is essentially a ritual. When the dragon awakens, the demons will send a senior demon to protect themselves from the dragon and the black priv, and this sacrifice is chosen by the demons. After all, the city lord is half-demon, the demons are his superiors, so if he doesn't make the sacrifice, he will be unfaithful, and if he is, he will be killed. Human children are still sacrificed. Shen Sanya asked, since people are forced to work, do they receive payments? Wu Yangsen replied that he was thinking too much. Sea fortifications were built to protect the city, but if they do not stop the black tide, the city will be destroyed. She asked, doesn't the Book of Heaven send out an assignment? This is a new mission, isn't it? He replied that let her not forget, they are here to collect information and search for the reincarnated. Shen Sanya asked, are they going to do anything about this? He smiled and told her not to worry after all, it had been a long time since the last time they visited the dragon port, so they needed to do something first. They walked further down the street, and he said that this was a great opportunity to do this, he would tell her about the basic spell. 
She agreed, and he said that the nine types of spells are classified according to their attributes, namely the attributes of true Kai in addition, they can be divided into three categories depending on their effect. Formation, which is a control skill, she has already seen the spell formation of the earth in the abyss. The second is an order, an attack skill that is easy to understand. The third is the seal, a mechanic that allows you to mark and track enemies. Yin is used in combination with Jin and order, but they only collect information, so the simplest spells are sufficient. He put a mark on the building with his finger and Shen Sanya asked what he wrote. He replied that it was a spell according to his attributes. Of the nine spell attributes, this particular spell is based on language and writing. The most useful feature is that it is activated by a verbal command. This is a specially designed empty spell. Casting the spell will result in the corresponding text being written, and casting it again will activate the seal. He left a mark on the wall again, and asked if she wanted to try to activate it. She replied that she did not know any spells. Wu Yangsen said that she didn't need a spell, just let her say something, it would be recorded. That's why he left it outside. Shen Sanya was surprised at first, and then realized that it was very noisy on the street and asked, Are the words of passers-by recorded in the spell? Wu Yangsen confirmed her words, and said that the maximum length is about 3,000 words, which is enough to cover what everyone is talking about. Shen Sanya thoughtfully raised her hand to her chin, and said that in everyday communication, however, there are many repeated words. Wu Yangsen replied that when they are repeated, the mark is triggered. The more repetitions, the more obvious the mark becomes. Let her discard the useless information and remain only. She interrupted him and asked, only important things. Wu Yangsen winked at her and said that he congratulated her. She found the answer. They just need to keep walking. One sign is useless. We need at least 1,000. These signs are needed all over the city. Shen Sanya said that it was like posting small notices everywhere. Let him teach her. She can help. After placing all the seals, Wu Yangsen said that what follows is the most important thing. He simultaneously turns on the function of monitoring all the seals at once. The good thing is that the Book of Heaven can also observe and record them, so he can collect all this information in one place. Shen Sanya asked, 1,000 marks. She can imagine how much information this will all convey. Wu Yangsen put his hands behind his head and said that this is quite a large job, so he puts it all to Tai Bai. Shen Sanya sighed and said that he really works so hard. So their so-called operation is to listen to the whole city. Wu Yangsen said that he would just want to know what the hot topics were in the city these days. They passed a street performer who was blowing flames from his mouth, and she thought the streets were so busy. Even with all the sacrifices, she doesn't see any particular panic. Further down the street, the actors were performing a skit. One of them said that let the descendants not look for the way to heaven. In the world of spirits and mortals, there are always different paths. Immortals do not eat or drink. What would they do? Where do they get their saturation from? They think they are of ordinary origin, but they consider them as insignificant as dust. Wu Yangsen went to the merchant and Shen Sanya remembered his words that outside the palace, all living beings would become their enemies and thought that if they really wanted to talk about hostility, then it would be about the immortal clan of the past. She understands that Wu Yangsen said this to make her last longer, but she doesn't want to be hostile to other races at all. Suddenly another actor raised his hands to the heavens and said that dried bones pass through the mortal realm. Their self-improvement, where does the competition with loneliness come from? Two streaks of blood and tears, there is only hatred for the fact that heaven has no eyes. Shen Sanya listened to the play and thought that in this situation she cannot do what she wants. Thousands of years of history have created the world today. This cannot be changed so easily. She knows nothing about this place and is unable to change anything. Yu Yangsen walked up to her with some street food and asked if she wanted to watch a play. She asked why he was eating again. Is he here on vacation? He replied that it was a local snack, dried taro. He had just bought it. Does she want to try? It is both sweet and salty, very tasty. And the play she is watching is called Hanging on the Gates of Heaven. Shen Sanya tried the treat and said that it was very tasty. What is the play about? He replied that it was a story about a war between immortals and demons. The human race rebelled and three tribes united to destroy the immortals. The author is unknown, but this is history from the point of view of the human race, so he thinks that a person wrote it. Later in the play, the actors pointed their guns at the man in the role of the Dawn Star, and one of them said that he did not obey the heavenly emperor and violated the heavenly rules. 
he must be stripped of his title and banished from the realm of the immortals so that no one remembers him. Now that he's here, what else can he say? The man in the role of the Dawn Star replied that he had nothing to say. One of the spectators said that then the Heavenly Master wanted to dissuade Emperor Ling Xiao from gathering troops. And what are the results? Another viewer said that all the sages who achieved immortality during those years were either banished or died inexplicably. The war between immortals and demons was intensifying because of Emperor Ling Xiao. What a disaster. Another viewer wiped away her tears and said that she was so sorry for the Heavenly Master. Shen Sanya touched Yu Yangsen's shoulder and mentally called out to him. He noticed her and asked what. She asked, is the Heavenly Master in this play the Dawn Star? Yu Yangsen confirmed her words and she asked, is he really such a big shot? In this play, did he have such a past? Yu Yangsen replied with a smile, after all, the play is 1,000 years old. Historical facts cannot be changed, but there are still differences in the details. Who knows if the play is an adaptation or a dramatization? Of course, the story of the previous Emperor Ling Xiao is well known. The story in the play cannot be made up. She asked if he didn't die later. He confirmed her words and said that this would be discussed in the next section. The heavenly palace fell. The troops gathered a large number of immortals to lure the emperor into a trap, and he was defeated. They cut off his head and hung him on the gates of heaven. Hence the name of the play Hanging on the Gates of Heaven. Shen Sanya exclaimed that this was such a tragedy. She started pushing Wu Yangsen and said that she was not going to watch this anymore. He asked, so he gave her a spoiler. He's very sorry. She asked how can he look at this with a calm face, knowing what is happening there. In response, he asked why not. She exclaimed, has he forgotten who he is? He is the reincarnation of the emperor. Wu Yangsen replied that he had nothing to do with the past emperor. The so-called reincarnation of the heavenly emperor, including all the other immortal officials of the heavenly palace, all have fixed names and positions. When the previous generations fall, someone else replaces them, that's all. They were reborn in this world, they were placed into the template of this world. So he will mind his own business, whether he is emperor or not. Shen Sanya looked at him and thought that he was the only one who could say that. He hasn't been in this world very long, but he seems to know everything. Even if it means changing the world, if he wants to, he can do it. Wu Yangsen bought another tasty treat and said that the food here is good. He asked the merchant to give him five of each flavor, and Shen Sanya thought that, for now, he only wanted to eat. Suddenly, she noticed how an artifact flew next to her, and from it came the voice of a Pradhan star. He said that he had heard some rumors. Wu Yangsen looked at Shen Sanya and said that Tai Bai has news. The Perdon star said that someone on the outskirts of town last night saw a huge stone appear in a gateway and then disappear. Wu Yangsen said that it was a soul stone. The Dawn Star said that a female corpse then appeared. Meanwhile, in the city prison, a female corpse was examined. A coroner named Chen Yuren examined the body and said that it was the body of an unknown female human, between 20 and 30 years old. No signs of miasma development. He raised the woman's hand and said that she had severe bruises on her back, abrasions all over her body, multiple broken ribs, and was bleeding to death. His assistant Nui said the time of death, as described by passersby, was believed to be around midnight on April 10. The body was found fully clothed. This is weird. Can they write it down? Chen Yuren said that it doesn't matter, there are stranger things. After examining the body, he left the building and interviewed witnesses. He asked the old people, do they say that the body fell out of the stone? The old man replied that they did not know, they only saw the body. They know nothing more, let him not write down their names. The old woman said that this girl is so beautiful, if the demon lord took her, she would not be seen, neither alive nor dead. The old man said that they were sorry that she was abandoned, but they were afraid of offending one of the demon lords. Chen Yuren sighed and said that if no one reported this, the body would be disposed of in a few days. Let them go home. The old people said that they felt better because of his words. They left and Chen Yuren headed back to the building, saying that the dragon was approaching. A strange thing happened again. Wu Yangsen appeared near the wall behind him, who hid himself with a mirage technique and began to eavesdrop on the conversation. The coroner's assistant asked if they could report this case. He replied that they should wait a few days and see if they could hear anything. Let her put the body in the freezer for now and keep all her things separate. After that, Wu Yangsen returned to Shen Sanya, who was waiting for him on the roof, and she asked, didn't he say that if they died, then after that they could be reborn in the soul stone? He replied that this was true, 
but this man did not have another stone after death. As for the cause of death, it must have been a serious injury in their past world. Shen Sanya asked, wouldn't the rules be different if she died and went to another world? Like a time-traveling soul traveling to someone in this world. Wu Yangsen replied that it was possible. Shen Sanya said that they could check to see if anyone's temperament suddenly changed, if anyone behaved differently or anything like that. Wu Yangsen agreed with her and said that in general, this woman is a completely ordinary person. She asked what he meant. He showed her the bag and told her that this bag contained the coroner's evidence. He wanted to see if there was anything there that could tell them who she was. He took a gun out of his bag and said that it's good that people here don't know what it is and don't use such things. Shen Sanya asked, is this a model? Wu Yangsen replied that the gun was real, even loaded. He brought the muzzle of the pistol close to his palm and began to shoot. Shen Sanya was scared, and he said that it was better to empty the magazine to avoid a misfire. He fired several more times and opened his palm with bullets. Shen Sanya touched his palm and said that he had no scratch. He replied that it was because of his protective true Kai. He poured the bullets into the bag and said that bullets from such a small caliber pistol are considered harmless even at the nascent soul stage. Shen Sanya thought that his hands were so soft. The Pradhan star told them not to make noise and Wu Yangsen replied that it was not loud. He imposed a Kai barrier. The Pradhan star said that this is not the problem. Now they are in the urban district and there are many practitioners here who can detect the flow of true energy. Wu Yangsen replied that he would pay attention to this and be careful. The Perdon star said that he would also remind that the city lord Bin Chikyu had arrived. The lord entered the palace grounds and the ministers greeted him, and one of them said that they had completed the registration of birthdays. 600 families were registered, and all children born in the last two months were also registered. When the demon ambassadors arrive, they will decide by lot which family will sacrifice their child. Bin Chikyu listened to him, and another minister said that he had something to tell about the pensions that were regularly paid. Bin Chikyu told him to speak, and he said that ten years ago, more than half of the city's residents were poor, but now 80% of them are registered as household residents. Therefore, he proposes to increase the size of the pension and post this amount for all general information in order to reassure the people. Bin Chikyu gave permission for this, and Shen Sanya, hearing their conversation, mentally said that she could not believe that they had a pension. She doesn't think they're that barbaric. Couldn't they do without sacrifice? Wu Yangsen replied that this was their job. Meanwhile, Bin Chikyu came into the palace and said that he was looking at the sea fortifications last night. The main part of the dam has already been built and should be completed today. The minister replied that it will be completed soon. While compaction and strengthening work is underway, it is expected that the construction will be completed within two days after people start work. Bin Chikyu said that the fortifications on both sides of the city's waterways should be inspected and strengthened with manpower. Last time there was an accident when the black tide went into reverse, so they must be sure that this time everything will be safe. How are things going with food supplies in the city after the port is closed? The minister replied that at the end of last year, residents and traders of the city were informed that every household was obliged to stock up on grain, so there was no need to worry about this. Currently, the city warehouse has enough food for soldiers and workers for half a month. Supplies have been switched to the overland route. Bin Chikyu said that supplies are still too short. 500 horses from the barracks should be sent to the grain column. The minister agreed and said that he would then go to the war department to discuss the matter and clarify the details before asking for a military dispatch. Bin Chikyu said that let the other department heads take their places. Suddenly a short girl appeared behind the ministers and called out to Bin Chikyu. She apologized to the ministers and pushed through the crowd, and then addressed the Lord with a smile. He asked, Zui Roman Eleven, she can't barge in like that, what is she doing here? She replied that Madame Jin had sent her to find him. Young Lady Akin woke up, doctors say that she is already better. Bin Chikyu was very surprised and asked, has Akin recovered? The ministers smiled and congratulated the Lord on the young lady's recovery. Bin Chikyu said that they should all mind their own business if there is anything to discuss. He asks them to wait for him in the council chamber. The minister agreed, and in the meantime, Wu Yangsen told Shen Sanya that they should go take a look. She asked, does he suspect the Lord's daughter? Little time has passed. In the Lord's house, his wife stood over the baby's bed and Zui Roman Eleven had already managed to return to her. 
Ashide Jin took her daughter in her arms and told the maid that the dead linen was a little cold. Let her take the coal stove and warm up the blankets so that a kin could sleep peacefully. Zui Roman Eleven agreed and Bin Chik Yu ran into the room. He called out to his wife loudly and she told him to keep his voice down. Their daughter had just fallen asleep. Let him look at her. She is sleeping so soundly. Bin Chik Yu looked at his daughter and said that her condition is much more stable now than when she was in a coma. His wife said that she was still very weak. The doctors went to prepare medicine. Bin Chikyu looked at his daughter with a smile and said that she would be fine. Meanwhile, Wu Yangsen and Shen Sanya were standing on the roof of the palace, and she said that this child really looks a lot like a reincarnation. Wu Yangsen said that they needed to watch her for a while. If she has retained consciousness at all, then she cannot act rashly so as not to expose herself. Shen Sanya thought for a moment and asked if she had a gun with her. Does that mean she is an undercover agent? But they can't just guess. They must find a way to talk to her. Wu Yangsen looked at the guards below and said that they should avoid the guards in the Lord's house. All of his personal bodyguards are cultivators, at least in the early foundation stage. Even if they use the Mirage technique, they can be revealed. Currently, all kinds of immortals with cultivation techniques are monopolized by the demon clan. Some of them who are scattered among people are practicing privately, which is also an act of rebellion. The lord of this city raised a group of human cultivators. He looked at Shen Sanya and asked, Why doesn't she go back to the heavenly office and leave this matter to him? She was slightly surprised and agreed, and after that, upset, she returned to the heavenly office and sat down on the pillow. The Pradon star asked, What's the matter? She replied that Wu Yangsen threw her out. She knows that she asked to follow him, but she doesn't want to be a burden. She can't help if she doesn't know anything. She tries to study, but there is only so much she can do. The Dawn Star smiled slightly and said that he could hear her. Shen Sanya immediately became worried and Wu Yangsen asked who kicked her out. He didn't do it. Does she understand? Wu Yangsen turned to Tai Bai and said that let him make a small observation screen. He would show her how to do it. She will take a VIP seat where she can watch and learn. A screen appeared in the heavenly office that broadcast everything that was happening around Wu Yangsen and Shen Sanya asked, So this is how Tai Bai observed what was happening outside. Wu Yangsen told Tai Bai that he allowed it this time, but don't let him peek. The Pradon star looked away and thought that he seemed interested. Meanwhile, Wu Yangsen began to move across the rooftops and reached the council chamber. The ministers gathered inside, and one of them said that the Lord's child was born prematurely two months ago. Didn't they say at that time that the child was born weak and was unlikely to survive? Another minister said that for several months they used magic potions to keep the baby alive. However, it's good that she returned to consciousness, but at this moment they don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. Another minister asked what he meant. He replied that the demon clan would send an authorized demon to help fight the Black Tide and the demonic dragons. He would arrive at noon today. This time whoever is coming gives him a bad feeling. Meanwhile, Bin Chikyu met Lord Picaro and said that he had personal matters at home, and it was rude of him not to greet him at City Hall. Picaro, the fire bear demon of the sect, patted him on the shoulder and said that he heard that he was doing a good job as the city lord. Bin Chikyu replied that he would not dare to say so. Picaro walked towards the hall and said that he was sure that Lady Jin was very pleased with the Lord's Mansion. Bin Chikyu would agree and thought that the so-called Commissar over the years obviously had to drive away the dragons, but in the end, they didn't come here to ask for money. Picaro stopped and asked if he knew why he was sent this time. Bin Chikyu asked him to explain and Picaro said that the dragon awakens every ten years, there is a small year and a lunar year, and now there is a lunar year, so the black tide is stronger than the previous ones. Before they left, the elders decreed that the day of the sacrifice should be fixed and not chosen at random. Otherwise, the demonic dragons will become violent, and they will all end up in trouble. Bin Chikyu replied that he understood he would make sure that the sacrifice was made. He thought that all the times the dragon appeared, there was only collateral damage from the destruction of the city, but they never swallowed living creatures. Everyone knows that sacrifice is just window dressing. What is this Picaro planning? Picaro took out a tablet with an inscription and said that the elders predicted the date of birth of the victim in accordance with the ritual. It's February 9th. Bin Chikyu was scared, everyone present was nervous, and Zui Roman 11 thought, February 9th. This is the young lady's date of birth. Something is wrong, she must go to madam immediately. Bin Chikyu asked why this particular date. 
Picaro smiled and said that everything is right, it is already April, the February child is no longer a newborn, but the instructions of the elders cannot be disobeyed. So he needs to find the child who was born on that day. Bin Chikyu replied with a gloomy face that he was not going to lie. His daughter was born on February 9th. Picaro asked, is this true? Madam Jin from the Orthodox Demon Clan took the initiative and married a half-demon. Then this must be a sensation. Do they have a child? He approached him with a wide smile and said that this was very good. This was his chance to show his devotion to the demons. Bin Chikyu began to get angry, and U Yangsen, sitting on the beams near the ceiling, mentally said that he would bet 50 coins that the Lord would turn against them. Shen Sanya said displeasedly that he seemed to be enjoying the spectacle. Why did he tell his daughter's birthday? Couldn't he hide it? U Yangsen replied that it was obvious that it could not be hidden. The sacrifice is made every ten years so that he can maintain his position as lord of the city. Only this time it was his turn to pay. Bin Chikyu said that he is only half-demon. His daughter, who comes from a higher family, he cannot dispose of. There are other children who can be sacrificed. Picaro said that he understood. He doesn't want to cooperate. Suddenly Ashide's Jin came into the hall, holding a child in her arms, and asked how this could be. The child is here, she brought it. Bin Chikyu turns to her in surprise and calls her madam. Picaro says it has been a long time since they last met. Ashaij Jin says there is no need to catch up. She already understands what's going on. She heard that he reached the kingdom of Dan, but she wonders how strong he is now. She is sure that he is not as strong as the immortals in those days. He must be confident that he is strong enough to keep the dragons at bay and keep the dragon haven safe, right? Picaro says that of course it is. U Yangsen looks at him, using his energy, and wonders, he has a Taoist realm, right? The system says that this is the demon Pokaro. Characteristics, health 1A 279 points, endurance 954 points, strength 679 points, agility 116 points, wisdom 78 points, mentalism 47 points. Combat readiness, spiritual strength 41A 999 points, true Kai 80 17, 662 points. Spells, Burning Body, Combat Skills Circle of Hot Province. U Yangsen says that Picaro has a five-digit true Kai. He really doesn't brag about it. Shen Zianya was surprised by this and said that her value is a little more than a thousand. She would really like to bring more benefits in order to gain the immortality pill. U Yangsen says that Lady Jin is a novice and the city lord is of an intermediate level, so numerically their combined true Kai is less than Picaro's. If they fought, they would have no chance of winning. Ashaij Jin says that the fate of the dragon port is in his hands. She promises him that they will work together to complete the sacrifice and protect themselves from the dragon, and they will not stand in its way. Picaro says that the golden lady has a great sense of justice. Ashaij Jin says that this is why she cannot allow this child to be sacrificed. If it is placed on the altar, then the ritual will not only not be completed, but the death and injury of the participants will also occur. Picaro asks, what does she mean? It's just a child. What can she do? Ashaij Jin says that she is her daughter. She inherited her magic through her blood. She has the power she was born with. She will not be left to die. They apologize to him. She wished he could see it with his own eyes. But they must not harm him, so why not ask one of their trusted people to test the child's strength? Picaro agrees and calls one of his people. The man he called apologizes to Lady Jin. He smiles and thinks that Lord Picaro ordered that despite what they were planning, he should just take the child while he can, because that's the leverage he needs. He grabbed the sheet in which the child was wrapped. Suddenly a kin opened her eyes, but her pupils were not visible. Dark energy appeared around her, which took the form of snakes and engulfed the man's body, and he screamed in surprise and pain. The man's body was bound by snakes and Ashaij Jin asks what level of training he has reached. Building the foundation, right? How many years did it take? This child was born at the base level and was born with the snake shadow technique passed down through their bloodline. She took a kin in her arms and thinks that this is also a big burden, an uncontrollable force that has been eating away at her since birth. Now the child has survived and can use a spell to protect himself, and it's all very unexpected. Doctors cannot explain it. They can only say that it is a miracle. No matter what, she will not allow her daughter to be harmed in the slightest. Ashaij Jin tells the Lord that he saw everything. She didn't do anything. It was the child's power. She doesn't want to create obstacles for him, and it would be unwise to sacrifice this child. 
she wonders, and these so-called sect elders want to use the demonic dragon sacrifice to kill her daughter. She will take it as an insult. If he didn't retreat, then she would have to gather all her strength and fight to the death. Picaro puts on a very kind expression and tells Lady Jin that she is right. Indeed, there are many other victims born on the 9th of February, so it is easier to find others. Alternatively, they would need to use 100 human babies. Bin Chikiyu was very surprised by this and asked, Is this normal? Sometime later. Shen Zainya is very angry and says that this demon is a real bully. Tai Bai says she doesn't need to rush. If they act rashly, they will only lead to unnecessary casualties. Shen Zainya asks the teacher, Is he worried that he will hurt someone? Tai Bai says that is not true. He is worried that he will do something wrong. Wu Yangsen got very angry about this and asks this old man if he has ever done anything wrong. He shouldn't talk about him like that. Tai Bai says that he is only saying this for his own good. Shen Zainya thinks that the daily bickering has started again. Wu Yangsen tells her that it is time to act. She must also be ready for this. She agrees and says she will do it. Sometime later at the Demon Clan's Inn, Bakaro's residence. The owner of this residence holds his subordinate by the head and burnt his body. He throws his subordinate's body aside and tells the others that they should send the message back and disperse. They will have to tell them that the lord of the dragon port, Bin Chikyu, has rebelled. His subordinates ask my lord, what is the evidence of this? Does he have an explanation? Obstruction of a sacrifice is now a crime, but not sufficient to warrant a conviction. Picaro asks if he can hold the position of city lord, how can he not have several crimes? It's too easy to find evidence. Does the insignificant half-demon really think that he can become the ruler of the city for the rest of his days? It's time to get rid of it. They must not hesitate and continue. The subordinates agreed with the sir. Sometime later, next to the manor house in the back garden, Ashaij Jin asks if she heard that Poharo has returned to his inn and is causing trouble again, is this true? Bin Chikyu says that his men deliberately injured several shopkeepers, and the official who approached had to take control of the entire shop and neighboring merchants. This man was a provocateur in every sense of the word. Ashaij Jin says it was a provocation, including the sacrifice of a hundred babies. Bin Chikyu says that he had to agree, but it should be done secretly and not publicly. Ashaij Jin says that she did not know until she received the rank that killing a hundred children means killing the hearts of a hundred mothers. Bin Chikyu says that if he doesn't, it will give Pokaro an excuse to cause trouble, or he can stand by and let the dragons invade, in which case civilian casualties could number in the thousands. Ashaij Jin says that she knows about it, but there is nothing good in being weak and retreating. He needs to think about it. The forces behind Pokaro are coming after their family. This sacrifice, even if he does everything he says, will not solve the problem. He will only find more excuses to make things difficult for them. Bin Chikyu says he will find a way. They must first go through the dragon's black tide. Ashaij Jin wonders what will happen if they can get through this. She says that sometimes she thinks they should just find a safe place like their ancestors did, set up camp, and hold their ground. Then a kin could grow up free, and he wouldn't have to worry about household chores. Bin Chikyu asks where can they go after leaving the port. Where is he not under the control of the demon clan? There are demons above demons. Ashaij Jin says it's just like that. The dragon is in the dragon sanctuary. It is just a pet of the demons. The real demons are in the demon realm in the spirit world. They are nowhere to be found. They left the devilish dragon to demonstrate their strength. It is a constant reminder to the mortal world of who is in charge. This is the same as the immortals of old. Only the immortals in the heavenly palace could pretend not to know. A man approaches them and says that he welcomes him, the city master and Lady Jin. Bin Chikyu asks what happened when it's already so late. The man says there is an urgent message from the prison department. One of Lord Picaro's lieutenants is killed. The body was found in the middle of the road near the city gate. This is Yulin Thung, the city ruler's guard. Bin Chikyu says that he is afraid of what will happen. He must deal with this matter himself. Ashaij Jin says that she will take care of government affairs. He says he will go then. Some time later. Picaro asks with an angry look how long will it take. What are the results? Chen Yurin says the initial autopsy showed he was not attacked with any weapon or spell. Multiple fractures and rupture of organs from the impact. The presumed cause of death was an attack. Picaro gets very angry and asks if he had wings but fell to the ground. Chen Yurin says there is suspicion in this matter if he lets him report it. 
Bin Chikyu says he should tell him what they want. Chen Yurin says that an autopsy he read about in the past showed a similar case in the same clan as the adjutant. The deceased was a soldier on a long march, flying over a mountain range in bad weather in this case, due to the size of his body, he fell on his back and received the most serious injuries. However, in this case, the lieutenant's injuries were concentrated on the chest and left side of the face, and an unusual laceration was discovered at the base of the wing. He dares to suggest that the lieutenant was killed, and that the killer caught him by the wings and threw him to the ground, killing him with one blow. Picaro gets angry and says this is stupid, he was at the ground level. How could he die in such a shameful way? Who in Longan has such power? Who dared to touch his people? At the same time, Wu Yangsen walks towards the building and two guards tell him to stop. How dare he invade the city master's residence? Yu Linthen points out the exit to the other guards that they should quickly go to the council chamber for support. Shai Jin was standing nearby and noticed this. Saka, the owner of the city and the chief of the guards, apologizes to her for disturbing her ladyship in the middle of the night. She asks him what's wrong. Saka says that a monk posing as a human came to join the lord and broke into the house. Shai Jin asks, is there such a person again? Don't they, immortals, sleep in the middle of the night? Saka tells the lady that she shouldn't worry, he will grab him immediately. Several guards took out their weapons and surrounded U Yangsen. He uses telepathy to say that he will pay attention to himself and make sure that they do not have the opportunity to monitor Mrs. Yes Jin's room, and Shen Zayanya must find an opportunity to get closer to her daughter. She asks does he want to start a fight with them. The guard runs to him and asks how dare he. If he doesn't heed the warning, will he die? U Yangsen says through telepathy that the average cultivator is at the beginning stage, using the most basic water and earth attribute techniques, and his martial arts skills are ordinary. It is very boring. The moment the sword blade touches his throat, he releases energy and says that this is the only way out, they should just let them fight. He blocked the blow with his sword, releasing earthen energy. The guard is very surprised when he notices this. The guards continue to attack him and wonder how this could have happened. The spell he cast on his blade, the royal order's rock splitting, could rip open his opponent's flesh simply by piercing it. But he cannot harm him, even if he hits with all his might. Even water arrows, which are famous for their piercing power, are also useless. Shen Zainya says that they cannot break through the shield of True Kai. Wu Zainyin says that this is only the basic defense. If they continue to fight in the same spirit, they will simply die from exhaustion. Until they die of old age, but they still won't harm him. Shen Zainya asks, didn't he tell you to keep your head down? Master Tai Bai is not tired of this yet? Do they recognize them as immortals or something like that? He says that they do not recognize, because for the mortal world, immortals have been dead for a thousand years. They wouldn't have thought of it before. Even if they had the power, they would just sit and look at the sky. Yulin Feng says that this guy must be using some evil technique to defend against their attacks. Wu Zainian thinks that this is not true, he just didn't do anything. The guard asks him what level he has reached. Yulin Feng says that they don't know yet, they should forget about it. They need to form up and catch this person. Wu Yangsen, using telepathy, says that these guards, among other things, deserve praise for their organization. Yu Linfeng releases his energy and uses the Thunder Seal skill, Thunder Skylock. A mark appears above Wu Yangsen's head, and he uses telepathy to say that this spell is used to mark the enemy, and then the rest of the cultivators work together to cast the spell, even if it hits blindly. However, the others remained inactive, assuming that the spell was a set trap. From this mark chains of magical energy flew out, which captured his throat, and he says that this is a rope for binding demons. The system notifies that the demon's binding rope is a thunder attribute spell weapon. It is made of cast iron, one such rope weighs a thousand kilograms. There is a spell engraved inside it, it may cause the bound person to have their true kai disrupted, so that the spell cannot be used. Wu Yangsen uses telepathy to say that one end is closed into the ground. This is the fortification of the city lord's residence. The guards are about to attack and say that all three demon binding ropes hit the target. He did not expect it to be so easy. He looks like a man from a village, so he has no fighting experience at all. Now he can't use any of his evil tricks because he's bound by the demon's rope. The other end of the rope is buried in the ground, so now he can't move, so they have to attack. Two guards attack him, but he jumps and dodges their blows. He turns in the air, and the chains with which he is tied fly around him. 
He pulled his hand and pulls the chain. Because of this, the chains stretch along him, destroying the tiles on the ground, and this greatly surprises the guards who dodge this. U Yangsen lands on the ground as a large cloud of dust rises from the chains behind him. He raises his hand with the chain and, using telepathy, says that it was torn out, but the chain did not break. Shen Zainya asks, but it's still on him, how to remove it. Maybe you just need to tear it off. U Yangsen agrees and says he can use brute force. But it's a treasure, so he wants to keep it. He can't just break it. Shen Zainya asks why he needs all this. This is not a tourist souvenir. Yulin Feng says that he must be very strong to pull the rope out of the ground. Sokka came to them and told them that they should stop. The guards turn to him and call him master. He asks, can't they see? They are all unsuitable opponents for him. This cultivator, out of politeness, did not strike back. They must untie him now. U Yangsen thinks about it. Did he say politeness? In fact, if they do not, they will all be destroyed in an instant. When the chains are removed from him, Sokka comes up to him, says his name and says that he is the general manager of the port of Longin. What is the name of this cultivator? U Yangsen says that he has been a wanderer since childhood, having neither a surname nor a given name. When he was young, he found a handwritten copy of an unnamed Kung Fu in the forest. The old man who was with him knew that it was a mortal sin for a person to practice this without permission and burn the remains, but he never forgot it. Having read it earlier, he remembered everything and began to practice. Shen Zainya asks, is this backstory made up? Wu Yangsen says that since these people think that he is using some kind of kung fu, he will just go along with it. She says he is such a cheater. The guards ask, did he say about an unnamed technique? Surely this is a long lost technique of evil. He should be jailed for home invasion. Sokka says that this cultivator is here to join the Lord, so they should be lenient. This is the instruction of the Golden Lady. Ashij Jin said some time ago that it is good when people come to them, they should not spoil the Lord's reputation. Sokka says that the Lord of Dragonport is a worthy person. All those who are gifted and talented and willing to serve the Lord of the city are welcome to stay and serve, regardless of their background. The city lord is very busy with the black tide. He would like to ask this cultivator to wait patiently until tomorrow to meet the city lord and explain his intentions. Shen Zainya says, this is a great turn of events. Wu Yangsen says that it is called attracting people if he cannot defeat them. Sokka politely asks this master to come with him. Wu Yangsen uses telepathy to say that they are still wary, but they no longer want to fight. Yulin Feng asks them to wait and asks, so he won't fight. He didn't even resist. How could this be? They need to put up a real fight. Wu Yangsen, using telepathy, says that he was talking about everyone except this idiot. The guards turn to him and wonder if he still can't calm down. Sokka quietly tells one of the guards that they should give him a separate place to stay and prepare food and drink. They must monitor the outputs and prevent anything from going wrong. Wu Yangsen notices this and uses telepathy to say that he has attracted the attention of the city guards. Shen Zainya will have to act. She agrees with him. Tai Bai says the Lord's wife has gone to bed. Now her daughter is alone in the ward. Shen Zainya came out of the scroll in this room and thinks that if she is the one reincarnated, then she hopes that she will believe her. If this is not the case, then she needs to imagine that she is talking to the air. This is a super child. She needs to be careful and not provoke her. She looks at Akin and thinks she looks very cute. She has a cute face and small hands. She notices that she also has a small ponytail. Is she the child of the snake spirit and the scorpion spirit? Is she born alive or did she hatch from an egg? Shen Zainya coughed and said that she should calm down. She needs to rehearse. She tells her her name and says that she is the same as her, but only she came here a little earlier. If they want to return to the original world, they must help each other complete the task. She hopes that she can trust her. Akin touched her with her tail. This surprised Shen Zainya very much, and she looked at her in surprise. Akin woke up and stood up and looked at her. At the same time in the city lord's guest room, U Yangsen sits at a table with many dishes and asks, do the guards always eat so well? Sokka says he's sorry for the offense he just caused, but he wishes him bon appetit. Yulin Feng says that the food in the city lord's palace is of course the best. He is glad that he can taste such delicious dishes for the first time. Wu Yangsen thinks that he will let Shen Zainya act on his own. He will just eat and drink tonight while waiting for news from her. He takes a sip from the glass and realizes that it is herbal tea. He is surprised and realizes that this taste is very familiar to him. 
he remembers what he drank in another world while playing games. When he stayed up late playing games, he would open a can and drink it. The guy took one of the empty cans and asked if he's been drinking this every day lately. Uyangsen says that he is afraid that he will get hot if he stays late. The other guy agrees and says that sounds reasonable. They say together that they can drink it between nights. They play phones while sitting at a table with food and cans of tea and say that they should wait for him and not go far. He must stop. His regiment is destroying everything. Wu Yangsen says that he is really good for nothing. He can help him. He thinks that a lot of time has passed since he passed into this world. He misses his old life. He needs to see how everything turns out. He can't tell his parents about it, so he'll probably be scolded again. Wu Yangsen continues to drink tea from the mug and thinks that in any case, if they continue to look for the reincarnated, they will definitely find more clues. Yulin Feng leaned very close to him and looked at him with a dissatisfied expression. Wu Yangsen asks what is he looking at. Where is everyone else? He says that they are all standing guard at the court, expecting that tomorrow he will be handed over to the lord of the city. None of them want to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. He senses the level of this kingdom through the aura remaining outside his body. The higher the cultivation level, the stronger the Kai in his body, and the same applies to the Kai outside his body. Wu Yangsen thinks that this ability needed to be protected against, and Shen Xianya sneaked into the city lord's mansion so that she could not be detected. He's not going anywhere today. Yulin Feng says that based on the Kai that is in his body, he is at best a Kai refiner. Then why is he so strong? It is pointless. Wu Yangsen just laughed at what he said. Yulin Feng says that just one fight, and they will know why, so they must fight. Wu Yangsen leaned back in his chair and asked, How can they fight here? But what about the table with dishes, cups, and tea sets? Yulin Feng says that he doesn't care. He is willing to pay for it. Wu Yangsen wonders, This guy is a husky, right? Yulin Feng tells him his name and says that he is in the middle of establishing a foundation, and he would like to make a statement. They must meet face to face. After one night, he lies on the floor, his body shakes in pain, and he makes incomprehensible sounds. Shen Zainya uses telepathy to ask Brother Wu, is he still there? It is confirmed that the Lord's daughter, Akin, is a reincarnation. Wu Yangsen sits on Yulin Feng and tells her that it is good. Shen Zainya says that she is too small to speak, but she can communicate with gestures. She told her about all their plans. Wu Yangsen asks where she is now, in the Heavenly Book Study. Shen Zainya agrees and says that Master Tai Bai called her, because the red strong guy came here again early in the morning, some time later. Yulin Feng wakes up and looks around. Wu Yangsen turns to him and asks with a cheerful expression, has he finally woken up? Yulin Feng notices him and denies it. He runs away from him and asks him not to come near him. Wu Yangsen calls him brother and says that he doesn't have to worry because he won't do anything to him. Yulin Feng is very afraid of him and says that he has too much power. He cannot be human. Who is he anyway? Wu Yangsen grabbed him by the clothes and said that of course he was human. If he asks again. Yulin Feng is very afraid of him and says that of course he is human. Wu Yangsen asks, so what did he see last night? He replies that he saw nothing. Wu Yangsen says that's good. They are about the same size and height, so he won't borrow his clothes for long. At the same time. Sokka asks the Lord what brings him here. This door leads to the courtyard, so if he needs to discuss something, he must go to the council chamber. Picaro, with a stern face, says that he must get out of the way. This greatly confused Sokka and several guards standing next to him. Zui Roman Eleven asks the lady what should they do. Ashai Jin says they shouldn't do anything. They need to see what he's up to. After that, Picaro went into her room. She apologizes to him and says that the lord of the city is watching the seawall because there was a very strong tide in the second half of the night. Shouldn't he go to the quay and prepare for the next tide? Picaro says there is no hurry. Ashaij Jin says that the lord's request to sacrifice a hundred babies has already been fulfilled. Is there anything else he wants? Picaro says that these are just a few half-demons. The matter is quite easy. The guards look at this demon with anger. He laughs and says that the dragon port should be used to sacrifice demons. He wants to talk to Lady Jin alone. He sits on a chair and smiles, and Ashai Jin is very annoyed because of him. She says they can all leave. Some time later. The guard says this Picaro is a bad guy. Sokka asks, hasn't the man who fought the Lord gotten what he wanted yet? Zui Roman Eleven asks, will they just wait outside? Her ladyship and the princess are in danger. What if he is planning something bad? 
The guard asks, doesn't the lady know? They were ordered to leave. This is the business of demons, and no one has the right to interfere. Zui Roman Eleven bursts into tears and asks, how could this happen? I wish the Lord would return soon. Yulin Feng comes to them and says that the city lord is here. The guard asks him if he didn't volunteer to guard that man. They don't have time to bother with it now that the gentleman is away. He is embarrassed and wants to answer this man. U Yangsen hit him on the back, frightened him greatly, and asked what was the matter. They just wander around the mansion grounds. They met last night, and now they are brothers, right? Yulin Feng is very afraid and agrees with him. He looks at him and thinks this guy is too dangerous. His power is unpredictable, but if you tell someone, it will only harm them. He would have to tell the Lord, and if he couldn't, he would have to tell Lady Jin. He claims that he has come to join the Lord of the city, but he must be lying. He is definitely up to something bad. What are his true plans? If he really deceived everyone and got a place in the house. This is not true. He is so strong that he can easily replace Master Saka. What should he do? Shen Zainya tells Brother Wu that she was just about to ask what happened last night. What did he do to this guy? Yu Yangsen tells her that he didn't do anything, and she can look at him herself. He's unharmed, isn't he? He thought he was a funny guy, so he wanted to scare him. But he didn't think about what would scare him to death. Shen Zainya says that she feels very sorry for him. At the same time. Bakaro asks the lady, has she seriously not changed her mind yet? Was she really going to stay here in Dragonport and live with this half-demon for the rest of her days? Doesn't she feel like a failure? Ashai Jin turns to him and asks what's wrong with being a half-demon. He is still the lord of the city. Picaro asks, so what? This port never belonged to this half-demon. This port was given to him for the sake of her status as a morgue. He smiles slyly and says that he heard that the youngest daughter of the Amaro clan, Lady Jin, is a magnificent woman. After these words, Ashaij Jin turned and looked at him. Bakaro asks, how can one be content with only such a small town? She can return with him and choose any reward. Ashaij Jin asks if this is what he really wants. In this case, he should return alone because she is not interested. Bakaro gets angry and says that she doesn't seem to understand the whole situation. She needs to come to her senses. He raised his voice and asked why she still doesn't understand. This half-demon and the child must die. Ashaij Jin releases snakes created from her energy and says that he should not touch her daughter. Picaro notices this and looks at it with a smile. He grabbed these snakes and tore it apart, which surprised her very much. He dispelled her energy and grabbed her by the throat. He lifted her off the ground and said that he was sorry, because he did not want this to happen. He gave her advice, but she did not listen to him. The half-demon will no longer be able to hold the post of lord of this city, because he will die. Akin opened her eyes and looks at what is happening here. Picaro smiles and says that he will get rid of this little child. They are both in his arms now. Ashaij Jin gets angry and tells this freak that she will never let him do this. Akin begins to cry loudly and she draws attention to her. She worries very much about her daughter who is next to her and releases her energy. She created a huge snake from her energy and crashed through the ceiling of the building, pushing Picaro out into the street. The snake crashes into the ground with this demon, and this surprises the guards who saw it. Ashaij Jin runs up to Akin, who is floating in a barrier created from energy, and says that she can stop crying because her mother is already here. She thinks, is she okay and nothing happened to her? She's been so quiet since she woke up and doesn't cry at all. What happened to her? Akin clung to her, and her face was very sad. Some time ago. Shen Zainya says that in fact... She was not the first to cross over to the other side. U Yangsin came to this world three months before her. All this time he trained and became very strong. Thanks to his spells, they were able to find her. They agreed that he would be in charge of the guards and she would sneakily meet her. Actually, he could have come himself, but Master Tai Bai said that he looked too much like a villain and his sudden appearance might frighten her. Akin looks at her with confusion. Shen Zainya was embarrassed and said that U Yangsin likes to work on himself he is very nice and reliable. The situation is tense now, and she is at the center of things. They know all this, that's why he's here in the palace and will protect her. If something happens to her, she should just scream. Akin doubts and tries to say something. Shen Zainya says that she need not worry, no matter what her opponent is, he will be defeated. In present time. Picaro withstood her attack and stood up, and he was very angry about what happened. Several guards ran up to him and asked what was going on. 
Yulin Fong turns to Lady Jin and thinks that she has never attacked like this before. Could this be the power of the Jidden Realm's snake shadow technique? Come to think of it, the lady was actually fighting another demon. He looks at her and realizes something with surprise. He says loudly that they must line up and protect the lady. Picaro smiles and says this is very funny. He releases his energy and asks if these freaks can stop him. They are all dead. Suddenly someone put a hand on his shoulder. U Yangsen says that no one wants to stop him, the lord. He just wanted to send him away, that's all. Ashai Jin notices him and asks if he is the one who showed up here last night. Yulin Feng thinks that during practice, every time he used someone else's strength, the power of the blow increased significantly. Picaro is the master of the Zengden kingdom, it will be easy to deal with him. Picaro asks if he is wondering why he is in such a hurry to die. U Yangsen punches him in the stomach very hard, and it greatly surprises him. He jumps very high and flies with him. He flies up very high and with his blow throws Picaro into the sea. Yu Yangsen landed on the sea next to him and thought that this place would be perfect. Picaro stands up on the water and asks who he is anyway. Yu Yangsen thinks that he cannot suffer from such a blow, it is too strong. He chuckled looking at him. He flies very quickly towards him after the jump and says that then he should taste his fist. Picaro is surprised by this and wonders how it is possible to move so fast. He manages to block with his hands in front of him, and U Yangsen delivers a very strong blow with his fist. Because of such a strong blow, huge waves began to appear and bright energy burst out. He struck so hard that the water dispersed to the very bottom of the sea. At the same time, Shen Zianya put her fingers to her ear and called U Yangsen. She didn't get a response and says he didn't even make a sound. After he killed that guardsman, he stopped hearing what she said last night. She looked at Master Tai Bai and asked, Does he know where U Yangsen is now? He says they should leave him alone. Shen Zainya asks why he says that. Does he want her to watch him and learn? Tai Bai says she should learn good habits from him, not bad ones. Shen Zainya agrees and asks what bad habits he is talking about. She comes to him and says that she will listen to the Master and will not learn bad habits. Tai Bai sighs and thinks about her behavior. She just laughed at it. Some time later at the house of the lord of the city. The guards asked, did they see it? This Picaro was knocked off him with one blow. Where did they go? The castle is now safe. Could it be that this monk saved them? Yulin Fong approaches Ashai Jin and says that he feels an aura outside his body. He is not only strong, but also not ordinary. He is not the person he claims to be. She silently listens to his words. He says that she may think he is cheating, but he is telling her the truth. Ashai Jin turns to him and asks if she said she didn't believe him. She believes what he says. Yulin Feng was very happy when she said that she believed him. Ashai Jin says that her fathers, who lived during the time of the immortals and saw their fall. She heard them talk about a time when immortals were at the height of their prosperity, when the mortal world was full of people like him. They trained hard for many years, looking for a path to immortality, but when they achieved immortality, they were only white immortals, far from the limits of their training. They reached the realm of true immortality, but through only five realms, black, gold, red, green, and white. Before becoming immortal, they relied on the accumulation of true Kai, which they collected and used, which is why a person can see their own Kai aura remaining outside the body. After achieving immortality, the question of cultivating and purifying true Kai remained, since the larger the aura, the more pure and restrained the Kai becomes. Most likely, this is why no force influences it. Yulin Feng is surprised by this and wants to ask her something. At the same time, Wu Yangsen hits Picaro with many strong blows, causing large waves and splashes to appear on the water. He says with a very angry look that he is going to attack him again. Pohero continues to defend himself from his attacks and thinks that this guy is just throwing punches mindlessly and that's making his job harder and each of those punches are several times stronger. Is he really testing his strength? He smiles at the fact that he is about to strike and thinks that this is ridiculous. Then he should show him too. U Yangsen delivers a strong blow to his stomach but Pohero withstands the attack. He is surprised when he notices that fiery energy begins to emanate from his opponent. Picaro releases a very strong explosive energy around himself, but U Yangsen manages to jump out of the way. Magma appears under his feet, he lands on the surface. He looks at his opponent and says this is interesting. That's his spell, isn't it? Pohero's appearance changed due to the use of the hot stone body skill. 
The system notifies that this is a fire attribute, a unique spell for the Fire Bear Demon Clan. This spell melts, it is hot and resistant to attacks. The owner of the spell is the source, and the surrounding lava is completely subservient to it. Picaro asks, so he knows about his spell. Although it doesn't matter. He attacks, swinging his fist filled with fiery energy, and says that he must receive a blow from it. He strikes with his huge fist, but Wu Yangsen managed to block. Picaro smiles and thinks that this idiot should take his blow and turn into coal. Wu Yangsen's hair came loose from this blow, he stopped this blow and lava poured on him, but he did not pay attention to it. Lava flows down his body, but he still stands in place. His whole body was engulfed in flames, and his clothes were burned, and this greatly surprised Picaro. The flames around Wu Yangsen disappeared, and he asks, he said he would fight, but why doesn't his lava work on him? Picaro was very surprised by this, and wondered if he didn't leave a single scratch on his body. Wu Yangsen runs towards him with a furious look, and says that he should stop playing games and attacking. Picaro immediately got his bearings, and is about to use the spell. He controls the flow of magma, and throws him back. Wu Yangsen remembers something, and says that this lava is all the skills of the burning stone body. He thinks this spell contains a triple formation seal effect, which is the control effect of the spell, it's very boring. Picaro says that he is not one of the guards of the city ruler's palace. They are at an advanced level of formation. Wu Yangsen tells this lord that everything is correct. He sees that he knows everything well. Picaro thinks that in a duel between practitioners, the difference in aura is the difference in absolute strength. Essentially, it is a battle of true Kai. Even if they had the same cultivation level, he would have to use his magic to protect himself. He says that he never thought that there would be a master like him in Dragonport. How much does he get for his work? Wu Yangsen asks if he really thinks he is one of the city lord's men. Picaro says it doesn't matter. If he works under him, then he will give him ten times more than he does. He tells him that Bin Chikyu does not have long to be the lord of the city. Wu Yangsen says that in the end, he informed the demon clan that the city lord was plotting a rebellion, so it looks like he is going to kill him. Picaro is surprised by this and asks how did he know about this? Is he spying on him? Wu Yangsen says he doesn't have to worry because he's not the only one he's spying on. He was careful enough to ensure that his men did not cause trouble at the inn to distract the city lord's men. While they were busy trying to calm him down, they sent a message. The envoy sent letters immediately in two ways, one along the official road and the other through the sky. Picaro guessed what happened and asks, so his lieutenant was killed by him. Wu Yangsen says they are all dead. Only the one who could fly left his body. Not a single word of his order went beyond the dragon port. His plot and plan to overthrow the city lord would not work either. Picaro says this can't happen. What does he need from him? Wu Yangsen says that he no longer needs to know about his plans, because today he will die at the dragon port. Picaro raises his hand to strike and says that he is the one who will die. Unexpectedly, just as he was about to strike, Wu Yangsen cut off his hand and broke his bracelets. This attack caused Picaro to fall to his knees, clutching his arm and screaming in pain. He wonders what just happened. Was this his real speed? He turns around and asks what was that. The spell he uses was Burning Rock. Why does he need this? This is their clan's secret technique. Wu Yangsen says that he has learned all the written spells. The only question is whether he is interested in using it. Since he's having such a good time, he'll play along. The spell isn't too bad, but it's a little unwieldy. He should know this, there is no limit to the amount of fire a burning rock can create. He releases very strong energy around himself, which diverges in different directions. Picaro was very scared when he noticed his energy and looks at him in horror. He asks him to spare and spare his life. He asks what he wants. He will make him the ruler of the city. Wu Yangsen asks, is he talking about the dragon port? In this mortal world, there are 16 districts on 9 continents, 5 capitals, and 2200 cities, but the dragon port is only in the middle of the list. However, this city is still developing. Picaro asks what city does he want then? If one is not enough, then he can offer two. Wu Yangsen smiles and says that if he asks, then of course he wants all the cities. Picaro was very surprised when he heard this. He gets angry and says that this is all nonsense. He's gone crazy. How is this possible, and who does he think he is? Wu Yangsen releases his energy and hits his stomach. Very quickly, Pohero grabs his head and says that he doesn't need to worry about this, because he will get what he wants and do it himself. 
By the way, the infuriating energy he had just used would no longer be needed. Some time later. Picaro lies on the water and smoke comes from his body due to his injuries. Uyangsen asks, what is this noise? Is it a black tide? It happened very soon. He very quickly put on his usual clothes and continued walking on the water. He tells the demonic dragon that he must come out because he will be next. Earlier that day, the central altar of the sea defense dam of the dragon. The guard tells the lord that according to the current water level, a black tide is expected in two days, and a dragon will appear shortly after that. Bin Chikyu says, this is much earlier than in previous years. The fortifications have been completed, all workers and foreigners have been evacuated, guards are in position. The guard agrees with him. Bin Chikyu thinks that Picaro's proposal to sacrifice a hundred babies, if this information is declassified, it will cause unrest. The black tide is approaching, the dragon is approaching, and there should be no unrest in the city now. After discussing the issue with several officials, it was decided that the lottery would be used to select several dozen more children. Then they will compensate the people who sacrificed their children to make the black tide and the dragon retreat. That's all they can do, they just have to get through it. At the same moment, Picaro and U Yangsen fly next to him. Bin Chikyu notices the splashes that appeared from their landing and asks what was that. The guard tells the city lord that there seems to be a battle going on several dozen miles offshore. Bin Chikyu says he sees it. The guard asks if they should send their people there to find out what's going on there. Bin Chikyu says they should wait and see, for now they should focus on defending against the sea. Suddenly the water moves away from the shore. He notices this and, surprised, wants to say something about it. At the same time, Taibai says, this is the harbinger of a black tide, when the waters recede and hundreds of miles of coastline dry up. In the blink of an eye, the harbor turns into a city on land. People who have seen the tide ask, does Kuroshio act faster than before? Why does this happen so unexpectedly? They must organize the defense of the dam and prepare a garrison. They must order the city to evacuate. Taibai says that the devil dragon is the main reason for the depletion of spiritual flows around the harbor. He awakens once every ten years to regularly block the flow of spiritual currents. Shen Zainya tells Yu Yangsen that he should look at the map. The flows of spiritual power are somehow strangely depicted here. It seems that they are attracted to something. He agrees and says that it is him. Tai Bai says that this time too the spiritual power was attracted by Wu Yangsen's presence. The devil dragon awakened earlier. The black tide will also arrive earlier. Red smoke rises into the sky and then the waves will come. Shen Zainya looks at it and thinks it is coming. A huge red wave is approaching the city, which is surrounded by a magical barrier. Tai Bai says that he has been observing the strengthening of the dams over the past few days. The dams in the harbors have been strengthened and a spell has been installed to contain the black tide. Except for this area, which is a weak point due to the trench. He's a little worried because if Wu Yangsen can't get his Kai back to normal after this, then he'd like her to look after him. He'll teach her a few simple spells to deal with it. Shen Zainya says he can leave it to her. Can she practice on this model first? Tai Bai says of course she can. Some time later. She stands on the wall of the port and concentrates her energy in her hands and thinks that this should have been expected a long time ago, but now it's time to act for real. A guard notices her and asks who is there? How did she get to the dam? Kiroshio will cover the dam very soon. Shen Zainya continues to use her energy and thinks that she is scared, but she has not done what she should do yet. Its streams of energy expanded in different directions and stopped the huge wave. The guards run away and one of them says that they should wait. Tai Bai tells Shen Zainya that she must remember that she must do her job without stopping the water. It is about slowing down the flow of the Kiroshio to prevent the dam from breaking. She asks if the second wave is stronger, what if these people are carried away? Tai Bai says they are soldiers, they don't need her to save them. Shen Zainya tells the master that she knows that she cannot do much, but she would like to do at least a little more. Tai Bai thought about her words. He thought it over and says that she shouldn't force herself. She agrees with him. The guards are covered by a wave, and they say that this is real hell. The wave has passed, and they notice that their bodies are connected by vines. Shen Zainya says with joy that she did it. Tai Bai watches what is happening and thinks that with this extra use of spells, the current amount of true Kai energy will soon be depleted. He flew to Wu Yangsen and said that he should hurry up. 
He is happy to hear Tai Bai and says that he should look at this, the sea is like meat, and very soon a devilish dragon will appear. Tai Bai says that he needs to go back to the embankment first. Wu Yangsen says that this is unnecessary, he will simply kill the source of the tide. Tai Bai says they will discuss this later, but for now they need him there. The guards look at Shen Zainya and say that this little girl helped stop the water and save them. She can do magic, where is she from? Another guard says they should report this to the city lord. Having finished using her spells, Shen Zainya exhales. She rubs her eyes with her hand and thinks that she suddenly feels sleepy. She hasn't slept much in the past two days, but she hasn't felt sleepy either, so she's probably too excited. The guards say another huge wave is coming. They need to go to the corner tower. The little girl is still there. Shen Zainya turns to the wave and thinks that this is happening again. She notices that a vine made of energy has appeared next to her. Huge vines that grew along the port stopped the huge wave. The guards look at it in shock and ask what is this. This is a very powerful spell. Shen Zainya is very tired, and looking at these vines, she thinks that it was not she who did this. She started to fall, but Wu Yangsen caught her. He uses his energy to control the scroll and wrap it around himself. He was transferred to the scroll along with Shen Zainya. Some time later, the guards go to the vines created with the help of magic, and one of them tells the lord of the city that in the blink of an eye the girl disappeared. He should pay attention to the watchtower. Bin Chikyu thinks that this is the most common spell of all, but he has never seen it on such a scale. The one who used this spell must be of a very high level. Sokka flies in on his sword and calls for the city lord. Bin Chikyu notices him and asks what is he doing here. He landed nearby and says that it was difficult to contact him at the dam, so he should come to him. Bin Chikyu asks if something happened to his house. Sokka says the matter is very important. He should allow him to report it confidentially. He quietly says that Picaro broke into his house this morning and threatened to kill him, and Lady Jin and Akin almost died. This news surprised Bin Chikyu very much, and he looked at him in horror upon hearing this. He asks loudly how are they now. Saka says that they are safe and sound and are in the house now, he can be sure of that. Lady Jin sent him to convey a message that Picaro intended to frame the Lord and must be eliminated, and that the forces behind him must be remembered. Bin Chikyu gets very angry and asks where is this Picaro now. Sokka says that last night, that man of unknown origin came to the house, claiming to join the city lord, and drove Pohero away. Bin Chikyu was very surprised by this and asked, did that person do it? Sokka says that this man claimed that it was so. The duel that broke out on the sea outside the city before the black tide was between this man and Lord Pohero. The guard points to the sea and tells the master that something has happened. This is a corpse. Lord Pokaro is dead. Bin Chikyu looks at his body for a few seconds and begins to laugh nervously, which surprised the guards. They asked the gentleman why is he laughing. Maybe they should laugh too. Bin Chikyu slapped himself in the face and thinks he needs to be quieter. How could it happen that Pokaro was killed? For many centuries it was unheard of for a demon to be killed by a human. He was ready for the demons to remove him from office and condemn him. But him being killed here is no longer a failure of his duties as the lord of the city. Killing a demon is a mortal crime. The guards ask if Lord Picaro is killed, then who will help them defend against the dragon? Is now the time to worry about this? The demon lord has died, and now the entire city will pay for it. None of them will survive. Bin Chikyu says that they don't need to worry about guilt. If there is any, it will only be on him. Demonic dragons are attacking, and they are the only ones left to defend the port. They will live and die with the city. The guards kneel and say that they will follow the Lord even if they have to die. They will live and die with the city. Suddenly the Red Sea raged and waves rushed into the city. A tornado has appeared in the middle of the sea and is releasing waves. Bin Chikyu stands on the wall, and a cloud of red mist flies towards him. Sokka says that in addition, the lady asked him to make sure that he knows about it, although at the moment it is only a guess. Now that Lord Pohero is dead, this suspicion becomes even more certain, the person who killed him must be one of the immortals. Bin Chikyu thinks that he is hiding his identity, killing demons, and is on the dam to stop the black tide. Before he had time to come to his senses, a powerful force penetrated the dragon's abode. But immortals, is it true? It's hard to believe that the ancestors of immortals who died a thousand years ago still exist. If he were to break through and become immortal, it would require at least a hundred years of cultivation, so why was there no sign of it? 
at the same time. Wu Yangsen floats in the air and looks at the huge red tornado. Bin Chikiyu is surprised and thinks that immortals and demons have been at enmity since ancient times. Could this be the reason for the early appearance of the devil dragon? The devilish dragon sensed the presence of the immortals. A huge dragon lets out a very loud roar, opening its mouth. Wu Yangsen released his energy and cut off the head of this monster. He floats in the air and his energy floats around his arm in the form of a weapon. He asks if it is true that it is a nine-headed dragon. He now had eight and a half goals left. Some time ago, when Wu Yangsen transported Shen Zaimye to the scroll space, she began to come to her senses and thinks about him. She is surprised that he took care of her and wonders what happened to him. She blushed and thinks he is too close. She can't help it. She has to keep pretending to be asleep. Wu Yangsen notices this and wonders, she is not sleeping, is she? He asks if he didn't tell her to use her kai more sparingly. Why didn't she listen to him? Shen Zainya is embarrassed by this and says that it is not important. Wu Yangsen says that she should not forget what he says. She smiles and thinks that now she will definitely remember this. Tai Bai asks, how is she feeling now? Shen Zainya says that she is fine, just wants to sleep a little. Wu Yangsen calls her and says that she should come here. She turns to him and asks, what did he say? He wrapped her in a big blanket and she asks, what is he doing? Wu Yangsen asks, she wants to sleep, right? This means that she should lie down more comfortably. Shen Zainya says that she doesn't have to be wrapped in a blanket like that. Wu Yangsen says that after Kai is depleted, there are side effects such as drowsiness or even coma or worse. He didn't think about the fact that she would run out of Kai, so he didn't give her the opportunity to understand the seriousness of it. Tai Bai says that it is not his problem, he is to blame for what happened. Shen Zainya says that it's all her fault. It was her fault that she tried to be brave, not the master. Wu Yangsen says that the two of them should figure out who is to blame themselves. She doesn't have to worry about it, because the main thing is that she's okay. Shen Zainya smiled and agreed with him. Wu Yangsen says that she should rest now and not worry about anything. She says that she can't sleep now because there is a dragon outside. He leaves her and says that she doesn't have to worry about the dragon because he will take care of it. Tai Bai says he should think about it carefully. If he wants to kill the dragon, he must use a force equal to it. Wu Yangsen says that he can't wait to get some more energy. Tai Bai says that he knows that he has the best ability to deal with the dragon, but the death of the dragon would be too much for the existence of an immortal race in the mortal world. Even if they don't claim to be immortal, they will be suspected. The heavenly palace has been hidden since its restoration, but if the mortal world starts looking for it, there is no guarantee that it will be discovered and besieged again. Wu Yangsen agrees and says they should end this. They should take this opportunity to slay the demonic dragon and show everyone that anyone who wants to start a battle should check if they have what it takes to do so. Currently, the severed head of the dragon fell into the sea with huge splashes. Wu Yangsen thinks that at first he didn't think that the dragon was strong, but was just performing its role too well. However, what is it? The Book of Heaven is believed to be all-encompassing and knows everything about the spirit world and the mortal world, but there is a fatal flaw in that there is no mention of demons. If the immortals knew everything about demons, then they would not be sworn enemies. He asks, are there only half of the heads left? He really hopes that the demonic dragon's brain is growing on his body. The dragon gets very angry and releases a very strong aura around itself. This energy reaches Wu Yangsen and he continues to watch the dragon. He realizes that many parasites are coming out of the dragon's body. If the dragon is only the host of this creature, then he does not control it. The severed head of the dragon, which still moves, explains this. Are all nine heads real? This is quite likely. Then where is the master who controls the parasite? He needs to forget about the dragon heads. He will go straight to his stomach and see what is inside. He flies at great speed towards the dragon's body, dodging attacks from the dragon's heads. He quickly flies towards one of the dragon's heads. Suddenly, someone in a strange voice says that he must stop. He won't be able to stop it for long. He can fight them for a while, but they cannot be killed. Wu Yangsen wonders what that sound is. However, the source of the sound must be inside the dragon. He asks why didn't he bite him. The creature asks what does he mean. If he provokes them again and gets killed, here he shouldn't blame him. Wu Yangsen stabs the dragon's head and says it must die. The creature asks is he deaf? He heard him. Wu Yangsen turns around and thinks it's there. He waved his hand and released a wave of his energy. He cut the dragon's body and saw a man who merged with the dragon's body. 
He agrees and says that he heard him. He flew up to the man and said that he needed a few more words from him so that he could determine his location. So they finally met. Did he just stop a dragon attack? The man asks that he not use the word dragon to call them. They were dragons guarding the worlds of mortals and immortals. These were his father and eight brothers. Thousands of years ago, they were all killed in battle. Only he was captured and survived. Demons infected their bodies with parasites, and they took over his body. Wu Yangsen was surprised by this and wondered, so how did the nine-headed dragon appear? Is this a made monster? He asks if he can tell him who he is. The man agrees and says that he is the ninth son of a dragon. Roman 11 win. At the same time, Shin Zainya thinks that she doesn't know what happened to Wu Yangsen, but it looks like he was caught in a hurricane caused by a dragon. He said that he wanted to take care of the dragon himself. Master Tai Bai did not dissuade him. She asks the master if there is any news from Wu Yangsen. He says she doesn't have to worry about him, and she just needs to rest. Shen Zainya says that she can't even rest because of what she is going through. Tai Bai looked at her and thought about this girl. He says that he has already told her that she should not follow his bad habits. Shen Zainya says that this is also a bad habit. Tai Bai turns away from her and says that Wu Yangsen woke him up. From the moment of his appearance until the completion of his breakthrough, and now after the restoration of the heavenly palace, a new reincarnation appeared in these three months, more than a hundred days, except for the special circumstances that caused him to fall into a coma, he did not stop for a minute to relax, and he began to sleep even less. Shen Zainya is surprised by this and asks what did he say? How did he do it without getting tired? Tai Bai says she should feel it. Cultivating breakthroughs is a way to relieve fatigue. Shen Zainya asks, so Wu Yangsen just kept working non-stop for a hundred days. Tai Bai denies this and says that it is more of death and rebirth to restore his fortune. Shen Zainya is very surprised by this. He says that in the early stages of his training, he put himself in danger many times. He found many ways to quickly regain his strength, even if he returned to his mortal body and lost his previous level of training, he also paid with his life many times. Shen Zainya asks why he moves to the power points, because it is close to the resurrection point. Tai Bai got angry remembering this and says that he tried to dissuade him, but this idiot didn't listen, he got worse and worse, and even liked it. Shen Zainya says that Wu Yangsen was really resilient. Tai Bai says that compared to the past 12 or 100 years of training, he entered the realm of a true immortal in the blink of an eye. Such a rate of growth was unprecedented. Thanks to this, the powers that control the mortal realm were completely unaware of his training, and it was only because of this that his training went so smoothly. He is the one who helped the emperor, and they should honor him as their lord. Perhaps he should encourage them to be like him, to ignore dangers, to forget about life and death. But then that wouldn't be true. In his own heart, he just wants them to always keep themselves safe. He is sure that Yu Yangsen feels the same. Shen Zaini agrees and says that she understood him. Tai Bai says that it won't take long to deal with the demonic dragon, so she doesn't have to worry. At the same time, Roman 11 when asks, is he immortal? Wu Yangsen says that in the history of immortals, dragons fought to the point of extinction a thousand years ago, defending themselves from the invasion of demons. It seems one of them survived. The wounded Roman 11 when raised his head and opened his eye, waiting for his answer. Wu Yangsen says that apparently he is a carrier of the parasite, but he has not lost his mind. Is he conscious and can control the parasite? Roman 11 when says he can't control them. The parasites are multiplied by demons, and once every ten years they must devour living beings to satisfy their lust for murder. Wu Yangsen thought about devouring living beings. He says that however, he heard that the demonic dragons in the demon port do not eat humans, so it seems that they are suppressing their actions. Is this true now? Without him, the dragons behind him would not be able to resist the urge to come. Roman 11 when looks at him and says that he already told him. Wu Yangsen says that he is an ordinary dragon, so he is used to talking to him, he doesn't have to worry. But he does not eat people, and there are other demons in the mortal realm, most of which are eaters. Therefore, rituals of sacrifice are regularly performed. Even if he insists on not harming humans, Port Dragon still has to select many human babies and sacrifice them to the dragons. Roman 11 when looks at him and asks, are they using children for sacrifices? Wu Yangsen asks, he doesn't know what's going on there, right? Sacrifice is an altar, a sacrifice immersed in water. Every time the black tide rises, a dragon appears, this is a ritual. 
Roman Eleven when is surprised by this and thinks that this happens every time for so long. He says that his father and brothers were eventually turned into hideous dragons. There is nothing he can do to be destroyed after death. Uyangsen says that he will kill the dragon, and then his father and brothers can rest in peace. Roman Eleven when says that if he destroys all the parasites, they will reproduce again and again. Uyangsen asks, so why not crush each of them? Roman Eleven when says it won't be easy. Uyangsen says he thinks they need a spell that works on a large scale, but there are a number of spells designed to fight demons. He raised his hand and created magic circles of energy. He begins to read a spell, the heavenly patron, this is an evil person. Roman Eleven when looks at him using the spell in surprise and recognizes it. Uyangsen continues to cast the spell, when the divine command is given, all the demons will be destroyed. When casting this spell, he fires a very strong beam of energy. A bright light of energy appeared in the center of the red tornado. A very strong beam of energy breaks through the tornado and flies further. People who see it are surprised by it and ask what is it. Sokka tells my lord that once this technique is released, this suspicion will be confirmed. Bin Chikyu asks the master if he recognizes him. In their time, few people saw this spell in person. Sokka says he only read about it. But the historical record alone is enough to make one wary. This spell is called the Thai Art of Immortals, Order of Celestial Exorcism. Roman Eleven when says that the Order of Heavenly Demon Punishment is the secret art of the immortals and can only be activated with the permission of the Heavenly Emperor. Wu Yangxian agrees and says that there is such a thing. He points his hand at Roman Eleven when and says that killing is only evil, the golden seal of immortality. He has placed a death seal on it, and the voodoo decree will avoid it when it is activated. However, the parasites have eaten away at his body and, being the heart of a demonic dragon, he will not be able to escape unscathed. Roman Eleven when thinks about it and says that as long as mortals are free, immortals feel neither fear nor regret. Uyangxian says that he shouldn't act like he's going to die heroically. He puts his hand on his shoulder and tells him that he must hold on. He hopes that he will survive. After all, he will introduce himself to him. Roman Eleven when thinks about it and is about to say something to him. Uyangxian says that he will no longer have to fight the parasites. He will take care of the rest. Roman Eleven when closed his eye and cried. After that, he immediately cast a spell and released a very strong stream of energy. He uses his energy to draw in the red mist. The guards were very frightened by this and say that the dragon went berserk. Sokka says they shouldn't panic, they need to stay in line. He turns around and thinks that the demonic power has been activated. The nine devil dragons, along with the black mist, are sucked into it. The dragon tries to resist this energy and escape so that it does not get sucked inside. Streams of energy wrap around the dragon's heads to pull it inside. Streams of energy capture all the dragon's heads and pull them inside. This spell pulled the dragon inside and destroyed it. People look at this and ask what kind of spell is this? How was he able to subdue the demonic dragons? Even demons didn't dare challenge dragons, so who did it? Suddenly they notice that blood has begun to flow from the energy. The spell dissipated and a huge amount of dragon blood rushed out. The dragon's blood falls to the ground as rain. People look at this with horror and think that everything is as it is written in history. The emperor was furious and the demons were ordered to be destroyed. The palace was stained with blood along with all living beings. Even unprepared, ignorant commoners who saw this spectacle were able to understand that the immortals had returned. Bin Chikyu thinks that the demonic dragons have turned into bloody rain. The immortals had been destroyed by three other tribes long before. If the immortals are restored now, then the spiritual and mortal worlds will become their enemies. Perhaps today will be the end of all dragon port. Jin, in this hopeless situation, there is no turning back for him. But they still have time to take care of a kin. After some time at the master's house, Zui approached Lady Jin and called her. Ashaj Jin says that she doesn't even have to try to convince her. She won't go anywhere. She turns around and wonders, this is a new power, right? They are truly immortal. Is this the beginning of revenge on the mortal world? Immortals and demons are all the same. She's had enough, so they can do whatever they want. Suddenly a diamond made of magical energy appears in the sky. Ashaj Jin notices this and is very surprised by this. Tai Bai's face, made of energy, appears in the sky. She wonders how it could be him. At the same time, Wu Yangsen tells Tai Bai that he was thinking about what he said about the consequences of the death of the demonic dragon. 
instead of allowing the mortal world to suspect their identities, they should come out and say so. Tai Bai says it's for the best. Shen Zainya watches what is happening outside using the system window. She calls Zhu Yangsen and says he should look at it. He approached her and asked if she was looking at the intercepted dragon port in real time. Everything is fine, isn't it? Shen Zainya asks what's good. Everyone is very scared. It's raining blood in dragon port. Is it worth continuing? Wu Yangsen says, this is the effect of demonic power. If they don't kill them all, the parasites will multiply again, so they'll have to squeeze everything out of them. Shen Zainya asks, what does squeeze mean? Wu Yangsen says he will explain it later. He points his finger at Tai Bai and says that then it's time for him to show his spirit. He must go to the dragon port and comfort them. Tai Bai asks why he has to do this. This is what he should say. Wu Yangsen says he has some work to do. Besides, it would be better for him. No one knows him in this place, and he will not be heard. He, this is different, who doesn't know Master Tai Bai. Shen Zhangya remembers what is happening in the city and agrees with him. She says that the performance they saw on the street in the Dragon Port was a story about a master. Before that, she didn't know that he was once a celestial master. Tai Bai says it was just a name. Wu Yangsen says that's right, that's a good idea. He shouldn't blame him for making holes in his heart, but he lost all his old titles after all. Even the immortals disappeared for almost a thousand years. But even after all this time, the mortal world still remembers his name. Isn't that enough? He is the last of the immortals. Tai Bai agrees and says so be it. Wu Yangsen says that he will give him a big projection using mirage magic so that the whole city can see it, and then it will be time for him to show himself. Tai Bai is confused and wonders, did he say big? The people who saw him recognized him and asked if he was still alive. The Heavenly Master has returned. Tai Bai says that he is here to announce this to the world of spirits and mortals. The immortals have not completed their work yet, but their successors have already come. Now the Heavenly Emperor has returned to the throne. He must guide them along the Heavenly Path. They must kill the Dragon Demon and protect all the creatures in the Dragon Port. The guards ask what will happen to them now that the Immortals have returned. Have they forgotten why Heavenly Master Tai Bai was overthrown? This was because the Master's heart was destined for the mortal world. Now that he is back, the Immortals must be different than before. Sokka says they shouldn't be rash, they need to listen to the Master's decision. Tai Bai asks where is the Lord of Dragon Port? Bin Chikyu does not show his emotions and stands silently, while the others look at him with concern. After some time, he flew up to the Tai Bai Mirage using magical energy. He bowed and said that in the mortal world, he is the Lord of the Dragon Port. It is a great honor for him to meet this master. Tai Bai says that the heavenly path is huge. Those who follow it prosper, and those who do not follow it perish. The one who punishes, kills, does not know compassion, deserves only retribution. How will the Dragon Port continue to exist? Bin Chikyu wonders if the immortals have really returned. Apparently, Dragonport is just the beginning of their journey. Wu Yangsen watches what is happening and thinks that the fate of the Dragonport is in his hands. He knows that he is now in a difficult situation. By the way, he also has a certain responsibility. Bin Chikyu thinks that the Dragonport is a demon clan city inhabited by demonic dragons for many generations. Now the demon clan's envoy has died here, and the demonic dragon has also been killed. The actions of the immortals put the dragon port in a hopeless situation. Now there is no other way but to seek refuge with the immortals. Wu Yangsen thinks that they shouldn't run around too much, because after all, they still have the opportunity to live. Most likely they know what the people will think when they see Tai Bai return to the throne, and what they want from them. He has been watching them for a long time. A lord with such authority should know what the people want. If that's not enough, he must think about his daughter. His family will have to part with the demons, no matter what. Bin Chikyu thinks he should think about it. He needs to think about the future. He bowed and says that the dragon port will follow the heavenly path. Wu Yangsen thinks it was the right decision. Everyone else in the city knelt just like him. Shen Zainya says that the master's work is very effective. Tai Bai says he should never ask him for something like that again. He has lost his face. She says that is not true at all. The master is very handsome. She sees that everyone respects him from the bottom of their hearts. Tai Bai says it's all in the past. He is not worthy of such respect from the mortal world. Shen Zainya says he is too modest. At the same time, Wu Yangsen flies over the Red Sea. She thinks that although the situation in the Dragon Port was a little alarming, it is finally over. 
he told them about what he found in the dragon's heart and about Roman eleven when, having destroyed the dragon, he went in search of it, and then she doesn't know what happened. Uyangsen says that the parasite was destroyed along with its limbs and right eye. He focuses his energy on Roman eleven when and thinks that he was so badly injured that he immediately sent him to the heavenly palace for treatment. Uyangsen says that the first thing he did was send him back to the heavenly palace. Shen Zainya says that then she and Master Tai Bai will return to the Heavenly Palace and join him. After some time in the Kingdom of the Immortals, one of the elves walks through the palace. Uyangsen calls out to this elf, calling her little tail. He flies closer and says that she should go and call everyone here. They need to prepare the healing herbs and prepare all the pills for internal and external wounds. The elf is surprised to see him and calls him the Holy Emperor of Heaven. She burst into tears and grabbed his leg and said that he had been gone for so long and she thought that he would never return. Uyangsen says that he was only gone for a few days. Her tears weren't enough yet. Did she hear what he just said? She continues to cry and says that she is on her way. Some time later. The elves use their energy and raise Roman eleven when above the ground. Uyangsen watches this and says that this is good. It's time to replenish the babies with their true energy and restore their cultivation. After all, they were all immortals before, so they were certainly good at healing. Two elves approached him and said that these were all the pills he ordered. Uyangsen takes out a piece of paper and says that he also has a special recipe for them. The elves look at the piece of paper and ask, Is this the recipe? Is this an elixir for children? Uyangsen agrees and says that they are small children. By the way, why don't they make it a little less bitter and more tasty? At the same time in the mansion of the city lord. Ashaij Jin asks if he finally remembered that he needs to return to his home. Bin Chikyu says that with the harbor reopening and the ritual being cancelled, there is now plenty to do at City Hall. Ashaij Jin says it would be better if they didn't think about it. He asks where Ken is, some time later. He came into the room where his daughter was sleeping and says that he should have returned earlier. Ashaij Jin says she is fine because she was looking after her. She is more worried about her future. The child's power is only getting stronger. She is very small, and it is hard for her. Bin Chikyu says that when the Immortal Order comes into play, he really hopes that she can take a kin out of the Dragon Port. Like she said, find a safe place where a kin can grow up safely. Ashaij Jin says they will leave together. Besides, he is right. Above the demons, there are also devils. Nowhere is safe. And now that Immortals have appeared, there will be no peace in the mortal world. The safest place is here. After all, he is now a powerful man, a city lord favored by Celestial Master Tai Bai. Bin Chikyu asks her to stop laughing at him. The Celestial Master who appeared at that time was an illusion created by the Mirage Technique, and he is confident that it was the Celestial Master himself. Ashaij Jin says that she knows, but still can't believe that the old master is still alive. Even her parents would have to pay tribute if they came. Bin Chikyu says that whether it is true or not, they have the power of immortals. Ashaij Jin says that he shouldn't think too highly of immortals, they are at best more talkative than demons. Bin Chikyu is embarrassed by this and says that she is right. Ashaij Jin notices a small object hidden in his clothes and asks what it is. Bin Chikyu took out this item and says that he does not know what it is and when it was slipped to him. Ashaij Jin looks at it and asks, is this a letter? He says that in three days a messenger from the Immortals will visit them. At noon, outside the gates of the city lord's house, to give away the goods, they both are surprised and say that they said they could cure a kin. Sometime later, they go out together and carry their daughter with them. Uyangsen says she should calm down. Shen Zainya says that the city lord and his wife are away from the others. They are waiting for them. Ashaij Jin saw Uyangsen and remembers the fight with Picaro and thinks that it is him again. It seems that the immortals already know about a kin's condition. Bin Chikyu bows and thinks that as long as they can cure a kin, they will try anything. He greeted them and asked what their names were. Uyangsen says they are only here to deliver the goods, a freshly baked special potion for their daughter. Bin Chikyu asks if he can find out what this potion is. Will a kin cure just one of these? He examines the pill that was handed to him. A kin looks at this pill in surprise and reaches for it. Ashaij Jin says she must be smart. She thinks that this elixir has a very sweet smell. Does a kin smell this smell too? Uyangsen says that, as they already know, this is not a disease. She was born with natural abilities that are difficult to control because she is only a few months old. She will get better as she gets older, 
but it is not yet known what risks may arise. Demon bloodlines are naturally long-lived, and it can take decades for her to mature if they can't afford that time. If they can't afford this time, they should take this potion. It will make her grow up faster. Bin Chikyu asks, how much faster can she grow up? Uyangsen says that she should take it in two doses, and by the end of the course, she will be an adult. No side effects are guaranteed. Bin Chikyu asks if he can ask what it smells like. Uyangsen asks, it smells sweet, doesn't it? It is specially prepared for their daughter, with nectar from a hundred flowers and aromatic herbs. They may consider it a curious activity for immortals. Only they, the parents, can decide whether they want to give it or not. Bin Chikyu approaches Ashai's Jin and calls her. She says that for now we can be patient. Akin uses his energy and creates a small snake that grabs part of this pill. She is immediately going to eat this pill and this surprised Ashai's Jin. She didn't have time to stop Akin, and she ate the pill. Bin Chikyu approached them and asked, Did she take it herself? Ashai Jin says, This is terrible. She should spit it out. Wu Yangsen watches this and looks forward to the show. Shen Zainya stands next to him and is tense because of what is happening. Akin rose into the air, and a strong and bright energy surrounded her. Bin Chikyu is very worried about what is happening and calls her by name. Immediately after this, Akin's body changed and she became more mature. She opens her eyes and looks down. Bin Chikyu immediately walked up to her and caught her in his arms. She looks at him and calls him dad. He hugs Akin joyfully and tears flow from his eyes. He runs into the house, calls everyone, and says that everyone should come here quickly. They should change Akin's clothes to something suitable. The others stand still and look at him. Ashai's Jin was dumbfounded by what was happening and looked at it silently. She turns around and says that the immortality pill is really effective. She didn't expect her daughter to grow so much. It was a bit unexpected. Her child ate the elixir himself and made such a scene, it made them, two immortals, laugh. Wu Yangsen smiles and thinks that Akin is not a child who knows nothing. Shen Zainya thinks that he now has the face of a villain. She didn't expect Akin to eat the potion right in front of the lord and his wife. She thought it was for the best that it happened by accident. Some time ago. Shen Zainya says that she is really uncomfortable being in the state of a small child now. After this whole mess with demons and dragons is sorted out, they might try to get her to grow up faster. Does she think that some special potion can do this? Akin immediately stood up and was actively trying to tell her something. Shen Zainya says that she should calm down and speak more quietly. They can't do that now because it takes time to make the tablets. They can't just let it grow up and do nothing. Now she, Lady Akin, is the most precious daughter of the city lord and his wife, and this matter must be handled very carefully. Akin thought about this and agreed with her. Shen Zainya asks, from the couple's point of view, what if their daughter, who is a baby, suddenly grows up and they are unable to accept the change? Wu Yangsen should be prepared for the worst, but he really doesn't want to make them an enemy. Akin touched her with her hand. This surprised Shen Zainya very much, and she looked at her. She gives a thumbs up with a smile, showing that they don't have to worry because she can handle this. Shen Zainya thinks that at this moment Akin told her that she would handle it and take care of it. Wu Yangsen quietly says that there is something about this Akin. The city lord fell in love with her instantly. Shen Zainya thinks that she really wasn't bluffing. Ashai Jin asks the envoys of the immortals to stop here. They ordered that everyone in the dragon port treat them as honored guests. From now on, they are free to come and go from anywhere in the dragon port. No need to be polite, no need to barge in. Wu Yangsen smiles and thinks that it seems that she was very unhappy about the intrusion into the city lord's residence the other day. He says that then he will do what he is told.